everyone. Science is simply the word which we use to describe a method of organizing our curiosity. I'm Shishti Sunita of Great Y here to speak about how did scientific curiosity made us how we are today. Have you ever wondered what would happen if Sir Isaac Newton did not find gravity? Or have you ever wondered what would happen if Thomas Alva Edison did not invent the bulb? These are not just simple questions. These questions have a name. It is scientific curiosity. Now day to day life, it is this sense of curiosity which makes us learn new things. In the field of education, the teacher is supposed to arouse in the children curiosity for knowledge and his success depends on the ability where he develops this sense in the child. Without curiosity, our life is a dull, drab, meaningless and routine. The whole of world's fiction is designed to create curiosity among readers and to make them sensitive to human behavior. If the world were bare fit of curiosity, there would be no fiction, no fantasy, but only a matter of fact living emotionless and indeed future, indeed lifeless. Let me tell you some great achievements of mankind to their curiosity. Newton's ideal curiosity led him to think about the cause of apple falling down rather than going upward and this made us to know which is gravitational force and what does it do to us. Grigory Menzen, an Australian monk, he took lots of seeds from the pea plant, round or wrinkled seeds, short or tall plants, yellow or green seeds. He grew them together and he made us know what is genes, which is the thing, which is the particles in us, which makes us related to a parent. Benjamin Franklin, who used to fly kites high in the sky on cloudy days, made us know what is electric conductors and helped us to help us to learn, helped us to protect multi-story high buildings from getting struck by lightning. William Harvey, he took care of lots of he took care of lots of reptiles, fish, insects, and then he took, made a research on them. He exploded the old theory of the blood circulation and strongly declared that wings carry blood to the left side of the heart. Then it is flooded into the lungs. It is then cleansed by the air present in it. Then it is passed on to the right side of the heart, which is then with the help of arteries, passed to the full body. And this is a blood circulation. So how wonderful our curiosity is and made us learn new things. Our curiosity and curiosity depends on how we think it. If we think it is worse, it doesn't help us, we won't learn new things. If we think that it is very important, we need it in our life. It will make you reach better positions in your life. Let me tell you some amazing facts by science, which we learn from scientific curiosity. A hippo's jaw can open wide enough to fit a whole sports car in it. So these are not just some fake news or fake facts. These are approved by scientists. And we can never find out that a hippo's jaw can fit a whole sports car in it. You, a human, contains trillions of bacteria. You might be wondering, bacteria are very bad for us. We will get many sickness. But these bacteria make us. These bacteria help us in many things. It helps, uh, it helps our white, white blood cell to build up the immune system. Then it helps us to make, be more stronger. 
a hippo a, a weight of an internet apricot internet internet is same size as an apricot an apricot you know how how much that weight and a uh, internet it weighs the same as an apricot exactly the same so these facts are amazing right these facts are driven from curiosity curiosity and curiosity driven questioning are very important for us as it makes us learn new things makes us find new things from our old researches and do you know why do we need curiosity in our life curiosity helps us be more curious curiosity helps us find new researches and without curiosity we'll all be cave humans just be scavengers gatherers and hunters if we weren't more curious if we weren't more energetic if we weren't more questionable in everything around us we wouldn't have invented this much our technology fully depends on our curiosity our curiosity helps us know new things and our curiosity is the key to asking great questions great questions in our life our curiosity helps us learn new thing every day you might be wondering the children who go to school they learn new things every day in their life right so how do they, how do they learn it is because of curiosity the teacher is developing this sense of curiosity in the children so that they will be more curious in everything and they will be more energetic in, our, in their life and because of our teachers we become great achievers like the like teachers themselves or scientists great pilots commanders lawyers and many more and this helps us teachers arouse arouse us they give curiosity instead of knowledge and i would like to conclude my speech by saying believe in yourself be more curious in everything and you will reach better positions in life thank you a warm and pleasant welcome to all think that there is no electricity in your village or the region you live in for about 2 3 days who would you blame it on or who would the others blame it on most people say it is because of the government or the political party which is ruling in that region i would like to start by saying that politics is an important aspect of our society without politics our society and civilization will collapse many people have problems with properly understanding the term politics Furthermore, many understand it in several conflicting ways. This, uh, in a country, the uh, major political problems are in four uh, problematic areas. The political parties need to face and overcome these challenges. First challenge: lack of internal democracy. The power of a political party is concentrated in the hands of one or a few leaders who are at the top. Ordinary members of the party. do not get sufficient information about what is happening inside the party the leaders at the top assume greater power by taking decisions in the name of the party second challenge dynastic succession the top positions in a party are generally controlled by members of a single family the ordinary members of the uh, party do not have chances to get to the top this is now also happening in the democratic way of ghanans therefore people without adequate experience and enough popular support come into positions of power third challenge muscle power and money this is a prominent challenge faced by all political parties during the time of elections as the aim of the party is only to win the elections they tend to use shortcuts some of the shortcuts they use are one they tend to nominate candidates who have or can raise a lot of money the rich people and companies that fund these parties in, tend to influence the decisions and policies made by these parties two in some cases they even support criminals who can win the elections for them fourth challenge they 
uh, the, it states that political parties do not provide meaningful choices to the voters. To provide meaningful choices, the parties must be significantly different. It, for example, in a country, the difference between major political parties and their economical policies have decreased. So voters who want different policies are left with no choice for them. As we move into the future, it is uh, more important than ever to consider how future generations understand and approach politics. It is our responsibility that we ensure that our children and grandchildren are equipped with the right kind of tools and the uh, right kind of knowledge to navigate through the complexities of politics. It is uh, our responsibility to ensure that uh, uh, the young people uh, know, uh, know their uh, importance in shaping politics. They need to understand that their voice matters and they have the power to make a difference. We need to encourage them to get involved in political processes, whether it be through voting, running to work or office, or just simply by speaking out on the problems that matter to them. Secondly, the young people have, should have access to uh, accurate and unbiased information. In a world where misinformation and disinformation is rampant, it is more important than ever to teach them critical thinking skills and to uh, help them discern fact from fiction. For, for, uh, thirdly, the, we need to foster a culture of civility and political discourse in our, in, our, uh, in, our, in our respectful society. Too often, politics can be divisive and toxic, with individuals on both sides of the aisle resorting to name-calling and personal attacks. The, not only is this unproductive, but it also sets a bad example on the future generations. We need to model a uh, respectful and civil discourse in our politics, even when we disagree with one another. Now we have seen the challenges pertaining to the lack of understanding about politics among the youth. Apparently, there is this article published by the Indian Express that portrays the attitude and contribution of youth towards politics. A country's future is made beautiful by the youth of the country. But today, the Indian youth have become selfish. They do not think about the country, but only think about themselves. They are getting enough job employments, but how much ever they are educated, they are forgetting their rights and responsibilities towards their family and country. The Indian youth today touch heights, but they are forgetting that they are cutting its roots to touch those heights. The Indian youth today settle abroad, but do not want to uh, contribute to the progress of the country. So this means that the parents of today do not want their son or daughter to contribute to the social work of our country uh, rather uh, in addition with their work. Because our environment is something like this. Everyone is focused only on building uh, their own future. They have, uh, they have to uh, focus on our country. The, today's politics is dominated only by the elders with a few young people in them. It is because our political environment is deteriorating day by day. True politicians are being replaced by people greedy for power and wealth. The feeling of patriotism is being replaced by familism, casteism and sect. The, like the tales of corruption being told every day, the indifference in politics is increasing every, every day among the youth. Great leaders and politicians like Subhash Chandra Bose, Sahid Bhagat Singh, Chandrasekhar, Azad, Lokmanya Tilak are no more today. They are leaders who can communicate a revolution in the minds of the youth with a sense of enthusiasm. Leaders today can't protect themselves properly. How will they teach uh, the young people about patriotism or a new revolution? So I would like to conclude by saying that the way the future generations and approach and understand politics has a profound impact on the, uh, uh, on the world we leave to them. We need to equip them with the right kind of tools and knowledge to navigate through the complexities of politics. Thank you. Hi everyone, I am Yuvan. 
Today I am here to give a speech about Meet My Piggy Bank. I got a piggy bank as a gift from my parents. I love it very much. It's a small container shaped like a pig with a narrow hole in the top through which I can save coins and currencies. It's one of my favorite toy and close to my heart. Okay, let's see what saving is meant by. Saving is when you take a portion of your earnings and instead of spending it now, you reserve it for later use. Let me tell you how did I start my savings. I got motivated to save money by setting a specific goal. Once you have a goal, you can achieve it. For example, I like to play video game very much. So, if I want to buy video game worth 30k, I plan whatever to save money for my work as a reward from my parents. Once my piggy bank is filled, I can buy my dream video game PS5. It's my long-term goal and I am waiting for that. Saving is the first step to compensate your biggest dream. Should I spend or save it? If it's unnecessary or an emergency, I will spend. Or most of the cases, I reserve it for later use. Try to divide expenses into two slots. Necessary expenses and unnecessary expenses. Try to avoid unnecessary expenses. Why saving is important? It helps me to realize the value of money. My parents used to give me a simple task. And if I did it successfully, I will get my reward. It encourages, motivates me and also helps to understand the importance of money. I become a decision maker as well. It's my decision whether I have to spend or save it. What are the benefits of saving money? It helps in emergencies. Emergencies are always unexpected. It helps to pay your large purchases. Reduce your financial stress. It, uh, savings helps to reduce your debt. Saving, it helps in medical emergencies. In general, I will tell you how we can save our money. As your kids, Money is kept in home in separate containers like money saving box as same like my piggy bank. For teenagers, open, save, open a savings account in any bank and let them save their money in a bank with compound interest. Uh, how do you teach kids to save? Let's see some ways to teach kids to earn and save. Reward them often when they save the, when they save the major part of their pocket money. Help them to set money goals. Give them an attractive piggy bank. Give, give them, give them an opportunity to earn money. Let them earn money by doing small, small works. Create a timeline. Tell them the real life stories of other kids. Give them money related books. Offer saving incentives. How much money should I save? Each time the amount will vary. But generally, I try to at least save 50 to 70 percentage of what I receive. Last but not least, 
set goals, look ahead. With savings, you can make things happen. Thank you for giving me a wonderful opportunity to speak about my piggy bank. Thanks to all. Hi, Ann. This is Ashika. We use a lot of chemical products. But do you know how do they come to us? They come to us after lots and lots of testings on animals. These testings had taken away lives of animals and also had taken their vision and made them blind. If this continues, then there would be extinction of these experimented animals and also those animals which feed on these experimented animals. For example, a snake that feeds on animal rat. If the rat, due to the experimentation, if it completely extincts, then there would be no food for snake and at last it will starve for food and extinct very soon. This causes an ecological imbalance or imbalance in the ecosystem. There are certain laws that states that testing on humans is illegal. But is there any law that states that testing on animals is illegal? No. That's why I chose the topic, animal testing should be banned. I'm here to convince all of you to oppose, stop and disengage from the cruel and unnecessary animal testing. Do you know that the cosmetics that we use have poisoned hundreds and thousands of innocent animals? Do you know that the hairspray, the hazard and the perfume that we use to make ourselves look smarter have blinded hundreds of thousands of innocent animals? Do you know that even the toothpaste, the shampoo and the soap that we use in our day to day life have killed hundreds of thousands of innocent animals? If your answer is no, then this is the time for all of us to know it. Animal testing is not only the research to find cures for human diseases. It is also the experimentation to establish safety for various products like daily necessities, cosmetics and medicines. To give us a safe product, numerous animals have died in laboratories. To ensure our health, numerous animals have tortured in laboratories. To let us stay away from diseases, numerous animals have gone through unbearable pains and aches in laboratories. Many well-known brands use this animal testing, like Johnson & Johnson, Colgate and etc. Companies like these first test their products on animals and then they sell those products in the markets. Organizations had come up to prevent such behaviors like people for ethical treatment of animals are better. They discourage the practice of animal cruelty and animal testing. Even though this is a best topic for a debate, it is unethical to make any animal the recipients of drugs and chemicals only because they cannot protest. Tests include brutal treatment like water deprivation, starvation, pain stimulation and forced feeding of unhealthy and non-edible substances and also other heinous treatments. Animals have no other choice but to endure the pain and slow death. It is not Nothing less than a torture. People use animals and once we are too damaged, they are put down or killed. There are certain laws or rights that states or includes and they should include the law that states or protects these animals from such behavior. Animals are born equally and we should treat all of the organisms as any human deserves. Perhaps you may say that these testings and researches are for a good cause. But is it really for a good cause that numerous animals being tortured, caged up and sacrificed to achieve? Perhaps you may say that these tests and researches are good for our safety. But 
is the chemical reaction on animals same as on the human beings? Perhaps you may say that these tests and researches are good for our health. But can these tests and experiments accurately predict the effects on human beings? Or is there no any side effects on human beings? Even if these experiments give us fruitful results, would there be any guarantee that states that there would be no any side effects on human beings? Even if these experiments are successful, think of how many animals would be sacrificed and tortured for this single experiment. Is it worth for it? For example, vivisection, the type of method which involves burning, dissecting and inflicting deep wounds into an organism. It is extremely inhuman to treat any organism that way. And also imagine if you were caged up and are waiting to die in vain. How would you feel? The same thing is felt by the experimented animals in the laboratories too. A mouse is tested for around two years to check whether uh, a product can spread cancer to humans or not. Animal testing this is not only the research of chemicals on animals, it is also the research of animals in the space too. Since 1940s, around a variety of animals are sent into space like ants, cats, dogs and even a jellyfish too. Today, around 32 monkeys have flown into space and even chimpanzees also have flown into space too. A mouse was sent to space on 15th August 1950 but it did not survive the return journey. I just have learned a story in my childhood that a parrot was sent to space or taken to space by an astronaut. It was a pet of an astronaut who was working in a space station with his two friends and his name was Charlie. The three took care of the parrot very very well. It was very healthy too in that space station. But one day, it was really unconscious. It was just flying and roaming. At last it had died. These three had just checked what was the reason behind the death of this parrot. When they checked, there was a leakage in oxygen cylinder. Due to the reduction in the oxygen level in the air, the parrot had died in the space station. However, this parrot had uh, given its life to save three lives of human beings. But it is best not to take any animals to the space station. And also, over 110 million animals are tested per year annually. And also, over 90% of the tested products on animals fail in the human clinical tests too. And also, it takes 12,000 animals and 50 different experiments to just pass one single pesticide. India, since uh, 2013, it had banned the testing of cosmetics on animals. And also, it had banned the import of these experimented or tested products of cosmetics too. There are five topping countries in this animal testing. In the fifth, we have Australia. In the fourth, we have European Union. In the third, we have Japan. In the second, we have China. In the first, we have United States with 20 million animals tested per year. Animal testing is have discovered many new and effective products or treatments for human beings in the past. Since the medicines and innovations are evolving continuously, people use more and more animals to their effectiveness. Toxic levels of these of some Biodiversity and environment are also tested on animals. And also, there are many alternative ways to, instead of animal testing. For example, a computer can tell whether a product is effective or not. Hence, say no to animal cruelty and use cruelty-free products as much as possible. Animals have no voice. 
they can't ask for help they can't ask for protection they can't ask for freedom humanity must be their voice thank you what is communication communication is completely based on trust when someone violates that trust by lying to us we get upset understandably as one lie can throw up an entire conversation or even relationship into doubt most of us understand the trouble that comes with the lies and choose to stick to the truth well it's not completely like that let me tell you something lying is one of the most sophisticated and demanding accomplishments of the human brain children have to learn how to lie yes there is also a fact that children with some frontal lobe injuries may not be able to lie also but is it sometimes right to lie i completely agree that lying should be avoided but there are many situations in which lying can be justified greetings all this is dhanushri and i am here to talk about the topic telling lies is a justifiable instrument first of all what is the clear definition of lying lying means telling another person that statement that we believe it to be false with the intention of making the another person believing that the statement is true let me give you two examples for consideration which completely depends on the term called deceiving deceiving means convincing the another person in a bad way first example is a movie about james bond lie even though it depicts the event that had never happened and the filmmakers also know that it is 100% fictional we the people do not complain that the movie is lying to us because we also know that it is 100% fictional the filmmakers did not try to sell it in the sake of a documentary of real events right their common motive is to entertain the people and they did not choose the option to deceive the people by telling that james bond really exists on the other hand the next example a documentary about aliens tried to convince the people by faking up the photographs and dressing up children in aluminum foil here also the common motive is to entertain the people but they choose the option to deceive the people by faking up things these two are important considerations because for example if a person is telling you something that is wrong but they do believe it to be true then they are not telling a lie to you they are practically telling a mistake your friend who thinks he has been visited by aliens in the last night's sleep is not lying to you he is telling the thing which he had witnessed the trickiest requirement of telling a lie is that the liar must have the intention to make the other person believe that the statement is true some lies makes us better and wiser person if a person is counting his or her final days you have to lie to them at some situations to make them happy yes in rare life threatening situations lying can be justified honesty is the best policy it has been soldered in our mind for a long time despite all these warning we lie frequently on an average a person lies four to five times a day lying starts when we are a toddlers and peaks at when we are a teenagers there are actually four categories in lying to lying to protect yourself lying to promote yourself lying to impact on others and lying to motivate ourselves before going to the positive sides of telling the lies let me introduce the classic lie which we all use in our daily life that is i am almost there i am near to the destination i'll be there in 5 minutes right you know that you are not almost there it might take 30 to 45 minutes to reach the destination but you still have to fudge up the truth in order to make someone happy coming to the positive sides of telling lies lying can boost up your negotiation skills lying can make you more self esteem and lying can make you confront the fears lying can save your life too would you believe how many of you lie at particular time in order to save life i would probably do so for example if you are facing a killer and you have to lie in order to save your life many would go to any extent to do that so people will lie 
This is called fight or flight response. The way you confront the fear is said to be fight response. And the way you come out of the situation is said to be flight response. And lying can save you from not being hurt. Many would not admit it, but so many of us lie to our friends and family so that they don't know the truth. So they don't get hurt because of our actions. We wanted to save them from heartbreaks with our lies. We wanted to make them at least feel good for just a second from our lies. And let me introduce the another term called pro-social lying. How many of you tell your friends and family that everything will be fine, even though you know that everything is not fine over there? This is to preserve someone's social security. And I'm sure in this, in future, time will come that your child will take up a drawing to you and ask, how is it? And you should say it is artistic, even though you cannot classify whether it is a dog or lion. Generally, this is what scientists call it as pro-social lying, the, fal the falsehood told for someone else's benefit. These lies are why generally accepted, because they are socially polite. At the end of the day, the common motive of telling lie is to justify yourself. And the other typical reasons are that avoiding punishments, avoiding embarrassment, and protecting your privacy. Instinctive lies are actually OK because it is the part of the human nature. We lie at any instinct in order to save ourselves from any harm coming to us. However, the planned stories which we, which we make up to come out of any situation should be avoided. Typically, a liar will not feel guilty by telling an authorized lie like what I told before, that is the pro-social lies. And lying is the point where justification becomes a question mark. The consequences are not as simple as you think. Last but not the least, this speech is not to let you know that lying should be encouraged. This is to let you know that there are situations in which lying can also be justified. Thank you. Greetings to all. This is Mohammed Imaduddin from grade 7C. Have you ever wondered a life without mobile phones? Yeah, it would be very difficult without mobile phones. Mobile phones are no longer gadgets used for communication, but it has also become an indispensable appliance in our life. Nowadays, mobile phones, which is like an organ in our bodies, has more versatile functions, such as a music player, a calculator, and other applications in which you can improve your relationship with each other in in social network. As a consequence, a life without mobile phones can affect on inconvenient communication, lacking of entertainment, and loneliness. First of all, let me tell you that a life without mobile phones would directly impact on our communications. Mobile phones are gadgets which are more convenient to communicate with each other for many purposes, such as dealing a business, transacting cash rapidly, etc. Though we can use letters and telegrams for communicating with each other, these are not the best ways for it. Besides, mobile phones can connect each part of the world together. So, thus we can understand that mobile phones are the best means of communication in the whole world. It can, it can make more convenient communication for civilizing people. Therefore, a life without mobile phones would make many obstacles about communication for human beings in the whole world. Secondly, I would like to tell you that mobile phones are not normal gadgets used for communication, but it can also be used for entertainment when we are feeling stressed or tensed. For example, you're very stressed because of something, and at that time, you can take your mobile phone and watch it, as it can give a recreation with a movie in the internet, like YouTube, Netflix, with a music player, and with other applications 
where you can chat with people all across the world like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram or FaceTime. So therefore a life without mobile phones may cause uh, mental problems as we may not be able to release stress and tension. Mobile phones are also very useful for education. It has many education apps like Baiju's, Vedantu, etc. These are very useful as we can get extra information and we can learn more things without going to extra classes. Thus, we can save time and fuel. So, we, this can also make an impact on stress as homeworks in schools sometimes make us stressed. Smartphones are also very useful for online shopping. It has many online shopping apps like Amazon, Flipkart, Misho, etc. These are also very useful as instead of going outside to buy, we can just click on our mobile phones inside our homes. This can also save time and fuel. Mobile phones are also very easy to carry. For example, you have a laptop. For you, it will be very tough to carry it as it will be heavy for you. But if you have a mobile phone, you can just put it in your pocket and move. We can also get all the information just in a small piece of metal, which is mobile phones. Think about it. All the information in the whole world just in a small piece of metal. Furthermore, we can access any information through the internet or one another in any place, like in a car, in a street, in a cafe, and so on. We can also keep ourselves updated with the latest information through the internet. Moreover, mobile phones are considered as the most useful tool to solve a problem in an emergency situation. It is because we can contact or call somebody just in a few seconds. For example, you're stuck in a forest and nobody is near you. You can just take your mobile phone and call or contact somebody. They will surely help you. And obviously, we can't live smoothly as we are living now without mobile phones in this era. And I know that there are no one here without a single mobile phone. Although we have many advantages of mobile phones, there are some disadvantages of mobile phones. Let me list out some. Neck pain. So it is obvious that many of them are watching mobile phones facing downwards. This is an incorrect way. And if you strain your neck continuously by watching mobile phones, then you will surely get neck, severe neck pains in the future. Poor sleep. The blue light emitted from the mobile phones interferes our sleep and thus it disturbs our sleep. It can also lead to insomnia, which is lack of sleep. Then poor sleep occurs. Poor eyesight. This is one of the major side effects of mobile phones. Poor eyesight. Again, the blue light emitted from the mobile phones plays a role here. It interferes our eyes and thus it makes our eyes to see things blurrer and blurrer, which is poor eyesight. Isolation. By watching mobile phones frequently, you will get isolated with the mobile phones. First of all, you will f forget your distant relatives and then you will spend very less time with your parents, relatives and friends. Thus, you will get isolated with the rest of the world. Road accidents. When a driver is driving and he is watching mobile phones, then he has more chances to get a road accident. It is because when we are driving, we should focus on it. 
but if we watch mobile phones then our, all focus will go on mobile phones and no focus will be there on driving thus you will get a road accidents then road accidents will also increase day by day and sometimes our world population too will get decreased i'd like to tell you some solutions for these negative side effects so bring your phone up to eye level facing if you watch mobile phones facing downwards then you will get neck pains in the future for preventing that you should always bring your mobile phone up to eye level i mean that it should be straight to your eye level then you will surely prevent from severe neck pains use voice assisted features it many of them while texting they will get their thumbs cramped so you should immediately take a break and if you don't want don't want to get your thumbs cramped then you should always use voice messages and other voice assisted features then it will be very useful for you hence you will um prevent from getting your thumbs cramped the next is um uh, store your phone out of sight storing your phone out of sight is a very good habit if you store your phone out of sight then first of all you will not hear your messages from it and you will not see your messages from it thus you will forget about your mobile phone for a while then the final most one phone free time so in your free time don't just sit like a rock by watching mobile phones you should always spend quality time with your parents relatives and friends and you should always spend less time with your mobile phones more time with who are all in your house thus you will prevent from isolation with the rest of the world you can also prevent from anxiety mobile phones are very important and 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 it brings us many benefits it is very it it plays a vital role in our lives and a life without mobile phones would drastically change us we can't live smoothly as we are living now without mobile phones in this era hence i would like to conclude my speech by advising you to please reduce your usage of phones and start spending more time with your parents relatives and friends i mean that you should disconnect with mobile phones as for connecting with the rest of the world i am not saying that phones are bad phones are also good and it's also bad take this as an example in vishwarupa movie kamal sir says that i'm a hero i'm a villain i'm both combined just like that mobile phones are also good and it's also bad they are both combined so please use it carefully and you should also use it wisely thank you do you know the world has been changed do you know the human perspective has been changed by a virus hi this is naresh of grade 7a and today i'm going to speak on the topic impact of covid-19 in human lifestyle yes do you know the human do you know the covid-19 has a huge impact in human lifestyle like it has made a huge impact in our economy like the largest gdp contraction ever in human history at a 24 percentage and it has a huge impact in our human lifestyle it has good impacts even bad impacts and it has made a high unemployment ratio there's a huge demand for resources and even the de- there's a decrease in government income so today i'm going to speak on this topic and we are going to see how we how did we get resolved from it so let's start the first topic today we are going to see is impact of covid-19 in human lifestyle 
how did covid-19 affect human lifestyle in in this pandemic period yes let me explain we all were isolated at this period at our homes so we all started eating sleeping using phone laptop and all other unnecessary things so we all started getting obese we got disease like bp sugar and many diseases people who already had it couldn't do exercises a sudden downgrade in their exercise schedule and diet schedule made them more obese and made them to die there are many scenarios where people started dying in bp sugar and etc even at this period people who had fractures bike accidents couldn't go to hospitals because hospitals weren't ready to treat the people because hospitals were afraid of treating people who they have covid so if we treat them we could get it so many people started doing home medicines which was a huge drawback for them and people who need urgent surgeries were not done so this got recovered when our indian government took recognition and started telling and pressuring the hospitals you should treat everyone fairly you should give them cor- correct medicine like if they come for viral fever you should treat them like they have viral fever not like covid patients and at this time other state workers who came and worked in other states were not very happy because they did not have houses they did not have food they did not have money or they did not have work to do their family were suffering a so suffering so a lot even government took action for it they made transportation for other state workers to reach their hometown even tamil nadu government took steps for it we all were not crowding a huge number at this pandemic period so we couldn't connect to our relations but we could connect by zoom but it was not still enough when you go and hug your family members you get a huge feel that can be never achieved in zoom or google meet so now let's go into economy covid-19 has a huge impact in our economy like covid-19 made a huge drawback in gdp gdp is a thing which is the buying capacity of the people and things sold in a country if the people can buy many things if products are selling more then the country is wealthy because people could buy many things people are wealthy if people are wealthy the country is wealthy but at this time people were not even having food for once in a day and many people were suffering without food this got well because our indian government brought new business modules like trading investing nft selling drop shipping and etc so people who are in the houses could earn more money so they could buy things even companies started funding the government for bringing new modules they they gave up new individuals who brought up new business modules even small entrepreneurs played a crucial role at this period because they were only the person who could get products from the company and take it to the consumers at their doorstep at a fair price so now let's go into an, another interesting topic unemployment unemployment is a thing which we all heard about at covid period many of the people here who heard that their colleagues were just fired because the company was going loss why did the companies earn loss because companies were had a hard time in manufacturing things if they export to the people who need it but the people were not ready to buy they couldn't buy because the product rate was too expensive so the people had a huge downgrade and so that the company started getting loss so if the company started getting loss the unemployment ratio increased it's a fair scale this got recovered when the government took actions like 
reducing the restrictions for importing and exporting things and start when people started going out and learn how to live with the covid so that companies imported and exported to other countries other states and they got raw material so the prices gone down so the companies need to make more things for making more things they need an employees for getting employees they need to again hire employees this is how the unemployment ratio went down and now we are very strong so now let's go into more demand for resources at this point how the people how do companies make products how the demand increased and today we are going to see the two important ways of demand one is the demand for resources for making things like companies did not have raw products to make things because they couldn't import things the restrictions were very high even companies which make essential things like milk dairy products and etc couldn't make things because importing products were a huge task even if you import products you couldn't transport the products to the consumers if you transport the products to the consumers consumers couldn't buy it because the money money capacity was not enough they did not have enough money so the company started getting loss even the sent out many employees so the demand for making things increased by this the people who live in middle class and people who are rich started fighting for products people who are rich price products for high rate i will buy this tomato of 1 kg for 60 rupees but the middle class man couldn't afford it he could only afford a 1 kg of tomato for 30 or 20 rupees but rich people were ready to buy things at war, the price what they say this was a huge problem at that time when this got resolved when people and companies started buying things and when rich people were ready to give things to people who are poor even non government organizations and individuals started providing meals for many villages and the last topic we are going to see is decrease in government income how did government's income go down before go knowing about that we should know how do a government get tax or produce tax the main way they get money or something is by taxes so if a country or a government charges more tax like you have gst asset tax water tax and plenty of taxes in our india how by this this covid period people were did not have for money for buying once in a day meal how could they pay taxes so the government had a sensible knowledge and they increased the due date so the people started paying money and due and their taxes at the due date they they, they cancel the taxes in 2020 and 2021 financial year and government ordered the house owners and landlords not to charge rent at this pandemic period even they didn't charge the rent but that's a huge problem at this moment government didn't have enough money to run the gov in run the country because at that time government need to invest more things for the people they need to sponsor many things for the people like they reduce the prices in pan shops so that the res- people who are so poor go to ration shop and buy things who couldn't go to grocery shop and can buy things and we are we indian citizens are good citizens in the world people started paying money when they got money and the government started generating more money than ever in the history they nowadays have more money income in in the in the in 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 asia so i conclude that we students should be a great role model to our parents and we should teach them 
more hygiene habits because there's high chance of covid again coming we heard news is like last month there were 10 days leave for uh, students in puducherry because virus was spreading in that place and we heard news is like the covid ratio is increasing in india so we should maintain hygiene habits like washing hands after coming from outside to home we should wear masks we should maintain one meter gap with our friends and family members and we should be aware that we have enough vaccination so there's a high chance of preventing covid thank you a warm greetings everyone do you know when you use positive language you will get more friends yes because when you use positive language you don't get chance to hurt anyone so you will definitely get fr more friends and usually you'll get fight with people because of the usage of po negative words but at the same time when you use positive words to motivate someone or encourage someone they will become happy and here you can understand the power of positive words and here is my topic the power of positive words usually words are potential weapons for all causes good or bad it depends upon our usage positive language supports you in clear and productive communication it also increases the likelihood of the person and motivates the person to do the next step of action positive language is a good thing for stress buster when you want a relaxed calm body you must use positive language and you must avoid black talks when you have positive thinking you will definitely have positive language so i will say you the benefits of positive thinking you will get lower rate of distress and pain lower rate of depression better psychology and better well being for some people it's just a cliche that positive language can change your entire life but when you look into deep into the research it's just not a cliche it's a magic which can change your life i know an example story for about this one day a small boy came from school to his home and gave a bit of paper to his mom and he told mom my teacher told only you are supposed to read this letter what is in it so his his mom's eyes were welled out of tears and she read your son is a great genius our school is too small for him our teachers are not enough to train him so we are missing a great intelligent and train your son by yourself the small boy got very happy and confident that he is the genius in the entire school and his mother trained him for lot of years and she fell into ill and she passed away one day when the small boy went into his mother's room and looking for something he she, he got the bit of paper which was given by his mom and he was shocked by reading the letter because in that letter it was like your son is mentally deficient so our school cannot let him to attend our school hereafter he got shocked because of because his mom told that he is the great intelligent but it is in letter it was like he is a mentally deficient child even he is the great inventor of that century you know who is that he is the great thomas alva edison he gave light to the whole world because of the light which was given by his mom in the form of positive language okay why should we use positive language positive language are ritual in a child's health development things that are said to be child especially from their parents the part of who they are so we must be aware what we say and you must use positive language to motivate and encourage child because of that the child will get motivated encouraged and he he or she will be doing all works in a positive way next how do you feel when you, when someone else use positive language to you or when you use positive language to someone P positive language 
creates an impact in you and it also builds confidence in you and you become more confident in yourself you know the impact of positive language in yourself you we must all know the impact of positive language in others life you know neil armstrong the person who first stepped into the moon told one small step for man one great leap for mankind i repeat one small step for man one great leap for mankind because of this almost great countries in world started researching in space and they start space missions and they explored space and you can take covid 19 period as the best example because the person who told covid 19 is a uncurable disease they are not uh, they were they were not well after that period but uh, the person who were thinking in positive way cured in that period because when you have positive thinking you will not feel about or worry about the problem you will only search for the solution and you'll get the solution soon after hearing all of the story i hope you will not use pos you will not use negative language and only use positive language and now you may have a doubt like how how will i communicate or how will i improve my positive communicating skill i will give you few tips which can help you in positive communication first have a eye to eye contact with the person whom you are communicating next always smile when you are communicating and don't use forceful words to the person whom you are communicating always give a better alternate to the situation and motivate this motivate the person and encourage the person to do the next step of work you know positive language costs little and words more at last i i request all you to think pos, think in positive way do good do good do good deeds and get the result in the good way thank you a delightful evening to one and all present over here this is yam subikshan from grade 7a here to deliver a speech on the topic you really thought that i'll go in the same slang and i'll just say my topic no my topic I, i'll make you to guess my topic is something which makes you happy relax calm and when you hear uh, yeah when you just do the uh, when you just hear the topic you'll just fe- feel your uh, you'll just be like you're in the paradise yes my topic is none other than the power of music music is a charming sound which makes us relax in this busy world where everybody have difficulties music keeps our brain lightened and gives us uh, and also it gives us relief to our brain the person who hears music will be blessed by all the gods the person who sing music will 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 be calm in any circumstances there are also other ways to hear music such as musical instruments like piano flute vina vina and so on guitar and so on do you know the god of music yes he is none other than apollo apollo is a greek and roman mythological god who is not only the god of music he is also the god of poetry dance truth archery sun light and so on he is a god for a lot of qualities right then think about god in india yes she is none other than mother saraswati she is a hindu mythological god she is not only the god of music she is also the god of creativity education what a mu- uh, when we hear music music gives us a lot of benefits let me list out some of them it is heart healthy 
research has proven that blood flows easily when music is played it elevates your mood it reduces your stress it relieves symptoms of depression it stimulates your memory it diminishes your pain music gives us a lot of benefit right we, if we want to be calm we have to hear some specific music right if we hear music like rock and roll music can we be calm no we'll just get headache right L music is uh, music's like melodious music let me list out a music and just sing an extract from uh, from it for you memories the top uh, the topic of the music is even memories right let's see how the music is here is sudivan sevikat she is to the wish to be here but you not cause the drinks bring back all the memories of everything we been through to sudivan sevi here to sudhe wish to be here but you not cause the drinks bring back all the memories and the memories bring back memories bring back you when you hear this music you feel calm and happy right when so if you hear musics like this you feel really refreshed so if you hear music like rock and roll music will you be refreshed no according to music genre there are totally 41 types of music i hope everyone know at least three types of music let me list out some popular ones blow music this type of music was developed by african americans in southern america jazz this type of music is mainly heard by old age people the peop uh, the child who is uh, now took a kids they won't even like those music but old age people it's sang very melodious this music is also developed by african american rock and roll music as i already said rock and roll music is something which uh, which makes which takes out all of our energy if you want to reduce our energy or if you want to get uh, ha, uh, it if you want to uh, just uh, give our energy to some if you want to just show our energy to someone we we'll, we can just hear rock and roll music this music was cre created in 2012 by alan fred this music is uh, was mainly created by electronic instruments most of us knew about it it's uh, it's it's not new to us right dance music most of us know about dance music this music is we use this music in dance country music country side music is a music where uh, the people who plant the farmers they all will sing those song right have you heard it in the farm land yes this they, this help them to reduce their burden on the work what do music teachers what uh, uh, what all the benefit uh, what, what do music teaches it teaches us it uh, improves your brain growth it teaches us calculation skill mathematics mainly in carnatic swaras um, uh, then it it stimulates your memory as i already told you it it, it in integrates your concentration attention improves your coordination its music is is a form of joy uh, not only you most of us love to hear music right but not only us animals respond to music when you just put a song if you have a pet in your home like dog mainly parrots if you just put a song it will just uh, it it will just it will try to sing with it right if you have pets in your home you'll really feel it the uh, music is the strongest form of magic music is the language of spirit music uh, music creates a kind of pleasure which human nature cannot do Mu uh, we should not only think about the present and the future we should also think about the past how do we learn lessons from our sweet memories music music takes us to the world of memories do you know that when you hear mu music it stimulates all your memory so that the emotional guys all the emotional people just cry like something right india is filled with music india is the best example for religious music 
India is the best example for religious music. Music is a harmonious sound. The person who creates music is known as musician. Let's come back to India. India is filled with two famous music. I hope most of us knew about it. Carnatic in South, Hindustani in the North. South India. South India is famous for Carnatic music. This type of music is also known as Karnataka Samkida or Karnataka Sangeetam. This music was developed by in modern day Indian states in uh, like Telangana, Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Kerala and so on. This, do you know the god of Carnatic music? Yes, he is none other than the great saint Purandaradasa. North India. This uh, North India is famous for Hindustani music. This music was mainly uh, developed in Punjab region. The father of Kar uh, Hindustani music, Tansen. Yes, he created this music in 18th century. The instruments they used in Carnatic music were, let me list out some of them Sitari, Sarangai, Dambura and so on music is it's like if you hear music you'll just lose all your negativeness music absorbs all your negativeness music is like a magnet which absorbs all, all the metal which is negativeness remains the soil which is the positiveness music is such a wonderful thing right i believe in music because it has the power of change. Tamil, Tamil has the special place in music. In it, Devaram is the Devaram is the oldest music book in Tamil. Let me sing an extract of it. Tenorum Devaram Isai Patin Nadaram Tenorum Devaram Isai Patin Nadaram Tamil Isaye Tani Isaye Darani Ile Mudal Isaye En Kanavum Ninevum Isaye Isairendar Maranam Yed En Kanavum Ninevum Isaye Isairendar Maranam Yed This song is a popular song music has music is a healing force of the universe if you all parents and teachers parents teachers chief guest principal students if you feel depressed or stressful please hear music if you hear music i am definitely confident that you will demolish half of your problems thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity everyone in this world especially the current generation where myself and we students belong to or in fond of with these cartoons, uh, I can understand all parents' mind voice. Plus, uh, why I am speaking about this cartoon? Myself, I am Balapriyant. I am here to explain on the topic anime and manga. Still, more, most of you are unaware that what topic I am speaking, what is it speaking about. Anime, in simple terms, we can understand it as a cartoon. But it's not exactly as cartoon. You will uh, let you will know it later. First, let me list out some uh, some cartoons which are animes that you don't know that you but you have watched it. The animes like Shinshan, Pokemon, and Beyblade. So you have most of you have watched this, right? But most of you still you are unaware that this is actually anime. So in this anime, there are actually three categories which they have provided for us. First, the age group between 7 to 11. Second, the age group, be age group of teenagers. And third, the age group of adults. Now, most of you can understand the point why I, I did not say that anime as a cartoon. Because we all still think that cartoon is, uh, cartoon is watched by only kids. This anime, this is also some animation uh, where only kids will watch. No, it's not actually. In Japan, this is actually, it's actually originated from Japan. They never see this as a cartoon. More than any uh, film production, there are more anime production. From this, 
before uh, now we can move to, move to the history of anime the history of anime it's not like that how history teachers take class for you but it's like how the first anime was the running picture uh, like how uh, during our kindergarten we our uh, teachers used to show more pictures and they used to explain it by like a story right same as it is yeah. we still don't know the exact date when it started but it is tracked in the early 20th century so i have never spoke about, spoken about this manga manga is nothing but it's a comic publications uh, initially it was started in the 19th century where it was not at all a mag uh, not at all comic first of all it is it was actually a magazine magazine in the sense they they used to publish more uh, most of the news which are, which are happening around the world but it was not actually a huge success for them then they before the world war 1 actually they uh, they turned their view to kids where they can attract all kids and the teenagers in, in so if we take a page they actually divide it into four quarters and they uh, draw various images in the four quarters where we can understand it as a co- comic so step by step they uh, shifted their magazine uh, the monthly magazine into weekly comics where our children started to love it now it is all around the world wherever we are we talk about this at least one person would answer for this question what is anime and what is manga so uh, how japanese see it as culture let's take uh, example of the fifa world cup which happened in 2022 if you look the if you look at the japanese jersey very uh, very close you can see there are lot of animation pictures involved in those they represent their culture actually by uh, printing those images in their jerseys so coming to the life lessons which i have learned by by seeing those animes let me uh, just say it in a japanese sentence kono sekai no to doko ni demo hikari ga aru tokoro ni wa ka kanrasu kage ga aru what this sentence exactly mean is that as long as there are shadows in this world i mean as long as there are lights in this world there always exist shadows it's actually not completed yet shoshi ga genin ga aru kageri kageri seifu ku senzai suru this sentence mean that as long as there are victors in this world there are always consequent i know you are all aware of the con- war, the word meaning consequent it's nothing but war from this we should understand that as long as we show some affection and love to uh, love to some people there has to be some hatred shown to others for example let's take our school incident how many of you all including parents in your school age you actually support your friends you actually oppose someone hey he is the one who's correct why are you why are you talking opposite of him we used to scold them right we used to show a lot of hate he is my enemy you are i won't speak to you here after this is how the world is now yeah i can understand there is no world without uh, any conflicts but we can reduce the, our hatred right so coming to the uh, coming to another incident which happened to me in my life when i was studying uh, grade 5 uh, i and my one of my friend we used to watch this anime called beyblade we uh, we actually daily chat uh, chat about this anime uh, and we came to a decision that we will confirm by a beyblade and we will keep a match for us kind of. then i started uh, begging my mother <laughs> like uh, how how to say please 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 then i actually got it and uh, i fulfilled my desire from this we should also understand that anime is not only for life lessons it's also there are also some negativities now parents up uh, you see now at least he spoke about this uh, it's uh, it also includes some it, uh, it also includes addiction where you cannot even come out i have faced this most of the time in my life if your parents say you to switch off the the television or mobile phones please do it 
uh, don't none of our parents are restricted uh, they restricted for uh, restricted fully in uh, fully for ignoring these cartoons but they uh, they to, they segregate a time for this right please understand your parents and you use this as a life lesson to you not as a, just entertainment and uh, for for other purpose like chatting and uh, wasting your times etc thank you the greatest trick the developer pulled was to convince the world that he never existed hi all this is shri krishna of great valley here to talk about illuminati illuminati is an organization created in the 16th century this organization was rumored to be created by professor westnaput this organization also had rumored that this westnaput professor had also included his few fellow mates the fellow mates consisted of nine people this illuminati organization had resembled this scarlet spider the scarlet spider i had a rumor stating that even if you cut the head of the spider the spider continued to move on another rumor is that only if you cut the limbs of the spider the spider will never move that is it will be immobile that is the organization so in the year 1776 professor afest had stated that in one of his lecture he stated that he stated about the barman illuminati using the barman theory using this barman theory he stated that there is an organization lurking in the shadows from from the past 200 years that is even before he had announced that is from 1500s so this is a critical theory right yeah an organization lurking in the lurking in the shadows more than 500 years this is so surprising after that in the year 1778 it was rumored that professor afest had been killed by illuminati because of revealing the information about the barnan illuminati after that in the year 1783 there was another rumor stating that the barnan illuminati organization had been disbanded why was it disbanded it was unknown but is it really disbanded was the real question because in the year 1888 using the afro american countries there was a rumor stated that using uh, the afro american countries were in economic crisis using this using this situation the illuminati had actually had actually infiltrated the afro american churches and started doing satanic rituals in the name of lord what confuses more is that in the bible in the last part in the revelation there is a phrase stated that there will be people coming in the name of lord but they are non christs they are in christ but perform satanic rituals do not believe them they who are demons do not follow them at any cost they are the demons who follow the who fo- who will make you follow to the de- to the hell what was more confusing is that in the present era the illuminati might exist the word might being because it is rumored to be existed because there are few conceptual questions given by political organizations okay we all know what is illuminati right what is the cause why are they formed professor westnaput had actually formed this organization for the political situations and economic crisis and dominated dominated in what way see this organization was purely uh, purely uh, purely made to control the world not just the political thing and economic thing they just used as a simple uh, loophole but they really do control us you ask me how let's say that uh, we using something like the mobile phones today might be because of them or may not be we don't know right is it really the evolution what we are going through we don't know another thing is that the former president yeah he is very formal we know we not mention his name he is known for his genuineness he he did many things for his country he is a former us president he was assassinated actually assassination why he had revealed one statement stating that i would do anything for my people i would even kill people for that if they are opposing there are people who will who are controlling some something from the shadows and i'm going to reveal it soon after he landed from his plane he was assassinated and killed people of us did not believe him did not believe upon, did not believe upon the assassination because they thought the government had actually assassinated him doesn't it sound confusing yeah illuminati is a confusing loophole no matter where you start you enter the same point yeah what after is that you all know princess diana right yeah princess of wales she had done much for her people like what she did was she stated a statement there are people again she stated the same statement people lurking in the shadows and i'm going to reveal them 
After revealing this, people soon started uh, agitating. They, saw, they wanted to know, they were curious about what they wanted to know. After that, she, was soon, she, she soon experienced, experienced the car accident. That is, you, the paparazzi had surrounded her. Soon the driver crashed into the wall and she had died. Is this just a random car accident which happened on that day? Do you think so? I don't think so. I think Illuminati still exist and they are using the loopholes to create something big. There are people, popular celebrities from BBC till Beyonce lurking under the shadows in the name of Illuminati. John F. Kennedy was just not murdered. His body was never showed. You all know Michael Jackson, right? The famous pop singer and also he's known as his famous moonwalk dance, right? Yeah. There have been rumors stating that in the internet that he had been having connections with the drug lords. That is, people who supply drugs to the entire country. There is also a statement that he, he made an enemy out of them. So which he was killed, which, uh, which made it become a heart failure. After that, there are few celebrities involved in this. I'm going to reveal just two people in this. Uh, it's not really true or false, okay? So hear this. Jay-Z and Kane West, the two famous celebrities, in one of the paparazzi shoots, they had shown the symbol of Illuminati, that is a triangle with the eye in the center. Don't you think it's a little bit of con uh, confiscating and a little bit of irony? This, was just, this wasn't just shown once, but by many people, even by Yo-Yo Hani singer of India, yeah, the famous singer. He had shown this, shown this the Illuminati symbol in one of his video songs too, which surprised everyone actually. Soon after this, the famous man who was arrested and uh, harassed recently and was, re and was released. Yes, I'm talking about Andrew Tate. In one of his podcasts, he had stated about the word Illuminati and Matrix. These two words actually jailed him, which isn't true. Yeah, maybe he did something wrong. The, the police had stated that he was arrested due to human trafficking. Whether was he really just arrested for human trafficking or was he just arrested because of these two things? Because soon after he said about these two statements, that is Illuminati and Matrix, the, the media went wild. That is, they were like, they were asking Andrew Tate to shut his mouth. They didn't, want, they didn't want him to reveal more information about anything. And there is one of the US governments which paid Andrew billions of dollars to ask him not to talk about it anymore. Through which he denied. So Andrew Tate and his brother both got, ar go, both got arrested. Don't you think this is too uh, suspicious? Yeah. What really is more different is that Illuminati isn't just a random organization. There is another robot about Illuminati, that is that. The Rothschilds, yeah, the famous business people. They stated that they were the ones who were controlling the Illuminati itself. Someone controlling us, Illuminati. Someone controlling the Illuminati itself. Doesn't make sense. What really, what really made this rumor happen is that Nathan, Nathan Rothschild, yeah, one of the famous person, he said a statement that the one, who Britain, who, the one who creates money in Britain and one who controls it will rule Britain Empire. Yeah. He stated this and the internet went wild. The statement went so wild that it, it, they thought that Rothschild was the one who is, real, who is the real Illuminati and the leader of the Illuminati. Again, let me talk about Adindros. Yeah. A famous personality involved with Andrew Tate. He had few misconceptions and few of his videos were censored. Why was it censored? A question mark. Why should it be censored? Is there something which should not be talked? Yeah, probably. They started censoring things which shouldn't be, which shouldn't be known by the public. What I'm telling is Matrix is just like a medium and Illuminati is under it. Everyone is under the matrix and Illuminati particularly controls the people. Yes. This isn't, just, this isn't some uh, random fact which, which you can just leave it. Whatever you see on mobile phone, let's say I'm talking to my friend through mobile, talking about, a, uh, talking about what paint to buy the next day for my home or what architect should I call for building my home, for the plan, engineer, everything. The next day you open the YouTube, you get random videos on architect, paint, all this stuff. Is it just random thing? It's just that you're being monitored, you're being watched, and you're being controlled. Illuminati isn't just random thing. 
i hope you all take it into your concern and take it take it very seriously about illuminati thank you this is sri krishna signing off hello all this is kavilya have you ever experienced ups and downs in your life i'm sure at least once you would have experienced it because it's an integral part of our life there is an famous saying life has its ups and downs when you are up enjoy the scenery when you are down touch the soul and feel the beauty life has its ups and downs it's just the part of the life someone's life may look very calm and stable but a closer look will reveal you how much they have suffered in their downs and how much they have enjoyed in their ups an outlook of anyone's life may look very easy up you feel like their life is fully filled with happiness success but you feel like your life is really con- uh, complicated it is because you have an outlook on others life and you have a deep look on your life life is like an wave it has ups and downs it's not static rather it's in fluid which will not maintain one specific condition your life may feel like a roller coaster ride and i want you to climb into the front row throw your arms in the air and just enjoy the ride there is no getting away from the fact that life is full of ups and downs and twists and turns and success depends on how you choose to approach the ride one day you can be on the top of the world and the next day you can be hit with a major problem you don't know how to deal with you may feel like you're unsteadily swagging on a tight rope between good moments and bads dealing with life's ups and downs is one of the hardest task a human finds it can really really make you dizzy have you ever thought why ups and downs are important in our life yes these ups and downs are really important in our life they teach us the life lessons of staying calm and confident during problematic situations if there was no failures or downs in our life we wouldn't have learned the beautiful lessons in our life these beautiful lessons can be only learned from the experience that we have in our life and these lessons cannot be learned from any sources of book or any sources of internet our life is a swing we may face ups and downs which push us to work hard and achieve success nevertheless the god does not forget to continue the cycle and perform his duties to swing us up or down we cry at bad times rebuke and ill at god for making our presence in the darkness of sorrow but on the other edge of the same bridge we never forget to tap our backs and proudly speak about ourselves at times of achievements joy and happy moments we cannot live in the moment of happiness forever and also bad times do not last forever but the challenge that lies is we have to be a person who learns and understands the attitude the nature of the surrounding as well as the situation we need to face later it depends that the scenario lies between happiness or sorrow let me tell you one story a long time ago there was a kingdom in far south the king in the kingdom had three sons one day the king thought that his son should be given an important education so he called the ki- he called all his three sons to the royal court and said them that there is a pear tree outside our kingdom and i want all three of you to go in search of that pear tree and find out how the tree looks like by receiving the king's order his sons went in search of the pear tree at the interval of four months as the king instructed once they all returned back the king again called them to the royal court and said that and he asked the first son how did the tree look like the first son replied that that the tree seemed crooked and dry it was lifeless the second son interrupted him and said that no my dear the tree was greenish and full of la- leaves yet it was not laden with fruits the third son interrupted them both and said that i think you both have seen a wrong tree the tree which i saw was magnificent and was laden with fruits they started to argue among themselves the king got up from his throne and he said that all three of you are correct all three of you have seen the same pear tree what i mentioned the king said that from this experience i want you to learn that on on one period of time the tree was dry and crooked and it in the another season it was greenish and full of leaves and in the another season it was laden with fruits the tree's appearance changed once the season changed so similarly we will have ups and downs in our life don't be affected with it 
Let us also talk about Mahatma Gandhi. We never fail to address Mahatma Gandhi as the father of our nation. Before talking proudly about his achievements, are you aware of his failures and his downs? When he called for the non-cooperation movement, he failed to gain support from the people against the British government. And when he started the civil disobedience movement, again, it was a great failure. Even the Indian National Congress failed to support him and considered his ideas often arise disputes between the people. And he was not depressed or worried about this failure. Rather, he motivated himself and started the Quit India movement, which was a great success. The Quit India movement was the last movement that was taken under by Mahatma Gandhi to gain independence for us. And this Quit India movement gave us the beautiful freedom that we enjoy now. Have you ever thought why dealing with life's ups and downs is one of the hardest tasks? Yes, it's jolly and hardest task. For dealing with ups and downs in your life, first you have to acknowledge that life has ups and downs. You cannot get lows without highs and uh, highs without lows. Accept what you can't change and change what you can. Use your lows to gain more knowledge about yourself and others. From, the, from your failures, learn lessons and use them to achieve success. During your downs, all that you need to have is a sense of never give up. Whom do you remember when you hear the word never give up? I'm sure you would, you would remember the great scientist Thomas Alva Edison. His story is jolly inspiring. When he was in his process to invent the light bulb, he failed thousand times. Everyone saw it as a failure, but he said that, I did not fail thousand times. I found thousand ways of how. Many people don't realize that at the time when they give up, they are really close to their success. So never give up because you may achieve your success at an unexpected time. The one who gets disappointed with ups and downs in life cannot resolve it. The problems needs to be resolved. So all that you need to have is a self-confidence within yourselves. Blaming is just the frustration over such situation which can affect your mental health as well as your physical health. The ups and downs we face in our life strengthens our inner spirit. The best fruit for the soul is learning from the ups and downs in our life. Uh, ups and downs in our life can totally change our life upside down. It can either save your life or it can ruin your life. It all depends on how you handle them. Don't be depressed with your downs and your failures. Always remember that failures are the stepping stones of success. And use your failures, learn lessons from them, and use them to achieve success. Thank you. A warm welcome to one and all present over here. This is Anushri. Our ability to reach unity in diversity will be the beauty and test of our civilization, said by Mahatma Gandhi. The greater the diversity, the greater the perfection. I hope you all guess my topic from these quotes. Yes, it's unity and diversity. Unity in diversity teaches all humans and living beings to be united and find ways to bond with each other, ignoring the differences. Unity in diversity was coined by Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru. It means that despite all the differences, we can be united. India is a country with many diversities. We speak different languages, have various types of foods, practice different religions, live in different regions. But actually, when we think about it, we do so many things that are similar except that we do in different ways. India's diversity has always been recognized as a source of its strength when British ruled India. Women and men from different cultural, religious and regional backgrounds came together to oppose them. There are different festivals celebrated by different religions. People have their own festivals which is celebrated by them with great zeal and enthusiasm. People respect the festivals of other religions and take part in their celebrations. There are four friends named Bijul, Amar, Riyas and Ravi. They are best friends but they belong to very different family backgrounds. 
individual belongs to a Punjabi family. So his family belongs to the state of Punjab. They go to Gurudwara every Sunday and serve food to people. They are non-vegetarians. Next, come to the family of Amar which is in the state of Uttar Pradesh. They go to temple every Tuesday and they eat vegetarian food. Occasionally, they will also eat non-vegetarian food. Priya's family is in the city of Hyderabad. His family goes to mosque every Friday and they love to eat non-vegetarian food. Next, what about Ravi? Well, Ravi belongs to the South Indian family that is in the state of Tamil Nadu. His family goes to temple every Saturday and they love to eat vegetarian food. They are street vegetarians. You see, all of them belong to very different family backgrounds. But when they are in school, they share their lunches and they are best of friends. They all love to gather in such a way that it feels like everybody belongs to the same family. Because they are united. When it's Ramzan, everybody gathers at Priya's house. They have delicious food items. And when it's Diwali, everybody comes to Amma's house. With a great zeal, they burst crackers, eat sweets and celebrate Diwali in a grand manner. When it's Lahiri, everybody meets at Bijul's house. They celebrate Lahiri with full of happiness around the campfire. And during Pongal, it's time to gather at Ravi's house. They have delicious Pongal and South Indian food items. All these families are so different, but they are all part of our country, India, which is very diverse. They all love to gather in harmony. That's the strength of our nation. This is the best example of unity and diversity. Songs and symbols that emerge during the freedom struggle serve as a constant reminder of our country's rich tradition of respect for diversity. Do you know the story of our Indian flag? It was used as a symbol of protest against the British by people everywhere. During national events, we all participate as a team. We don't discriminate against one another based on religion, region, caste, etc. We represent each culture very proudly and we respect it together that shows our unity. Whenever cricket world cups are going on, we unite as one whole country and cheer for our players' victory. Whenever we won the Cricket World Cup, we have celebrated it being together. Even from the Indian Army, Navy and Air Force, the soldiers are selected from different religion, region, caste, culture, etc. But they fight together and protect us from our enemies. Not only festivals, even in the time of emergency, we are all together and united. In 2014, there was a flood in Jammu and Kashmir. During that flood, more than 1 lakh people were affected. The entire country contributed something to the flood affected people of Jammu and Kashmir. They gave different things. They donated money, food, clothes, etc. so that all the victims can be helped. See, when it is in the time of emergency, we are all together and united. The history of many places shows us how many different cultures have helped to shape life and culture there. This region became very diverse because of their unique histories. Similarly, diversity also comes about when people adopt their lives to the geographical area in which they live. What is the importance of unity in diversity? Is it 
it just for making our country the topest in unity in diversity? No. Unity in diversity boosts morale of people at workplace, organization, community, etc. It makes communication more effective even in a bad situation. It keeps people away from social problems and helps to manage conflicts easily. As Indians, we all should understand our responsibility and try to retain the unique features of India at any cost. Unity in diversity is the real prosperity and the way to progress in the present as well as the future. Together we can do so much but little but alone we can do so little. Being different gives the world different colors. You can do things I cannot. I can do things you cannot. Together we can do great things. These are all the quotes which gives us motivation to be united even in the diverse situation. In India we have different states, different religions, different cultures etc. But still we all stay together, celebrate together and struggle together. And that's why India is the best, best example of unity in diversity. Thank you. Hi everyone, I am Vishwud from grade 9b here to speak about tiny changes, remarkable results. The fate of British cycling changed one day in 2003. The organization which was the governing body for professional cyclists in Great Britain appointed a new performance director, Dave Brailsford. During that time, the British cyclists had achieved around 100 years of mediocrity, but they had never won a 2D France and they had just won one Olympic gold medal. Their progress and achievements were so underwhelming that one of the top brands which provided gear for cycles in Europe denied the Brits to provide their gear. Why did they deny? They denied because they thought their sales would drop down if other professional cyclists saw the British professional cyclists using their gear. Dave Brailsford was hired to put British cycling on a new trajectory. Dave Brails, what was different about Dave Brailsford from other coaches? It was his relentless commitment to a strategy that he referred to as the aggregation of marginal gains, which was derived from the philosophy of searching for tiny margin of improvements in everything you do. Brailsford said, if you take everything that you goes into cycling, then break it down and then improve it by 1%, the increase will be significant when you add it all together. Dave Brailsford and his coaches continued to keep making 1% improvements in unexpected areas. They changed the seats of the tyre to make them more comfortable for the cyclists. They applied alcohol on the tyres to make the grip more better. They even installed biofeedback sensors to the players to check which player responded to which workout the best. They kept on making 1% improvements like this. Finally, when Olympic Games was conducted at Beijing in 2008, they won an astounding amount of 60% of the gold medals available. The British cyclists raised the bar and when the Olympic Games was held in London after four years, they set nine Olympic records and seven world records. They even won many 2 differences in the following years. How did a normal set of cyclists change into world champions? It was because of the strategy that Brailsford referred to as the aggregation of marginal gains. In a short span of 2007 to 2017, the British cyclists won 178 world championships and 66 Olympic and Paralympic gold medals. We often underestimate the value of tiny changes and 1% improvement. 
Tiny changes and 1% improvement is not notable, sometimes not even noticeable in short span of time. But this is how the math works. If you keep on making 1% improvement day by day for a whole year, by the end of the year, you would be 37 times better. Conversely, if you get 1% worse day by day for a whole year, by the end of the year, you would be almost zero. Habits are like the compound interest for self-improvement. They are also double-sided daggers. They can either compound for you or compound against you. If you follow good habits, they can compound for you and improve yourself. And if you follow bad habits, they can compound against you and they can even destroy you. Let's say you have a good habit of learning a new word each day for a whole year. If you continue this for a whole year, then by the end of the year, you would have learned 365 new words. That is good for you. Then you have a bad habit of increasing the time you watch television each day by one minute. And by the end of the year, you would have increased 365 minutes of how much you watch television. This will affect your health and it even damages your eyes. A slight change in habits is similar to changing an aeroplane which has taken off for just a few degrees. Let's say you are flying from De Chennai to Delhi and after taking off you change the aeroplane for just a few degrees. When you land, your destination will be somewhere out of India. Similarly, just a slight change in your daily habits will land you in a totally different destination. We often dismiss tiny changes or small improvements because they seem insignificant at a certain amount of time or a short span of time. The slow pace of transformation eventually leads to bad habits to slide into our routines. Let's take an example of bamboo. It develops its extensive root system under the ground for five years. But in just a short span of six weeks, it grows into 90 feet into the air. Similarly, breakthrough events in our life are often which uh, takes place due to the actions that we take back long ago. What is progress really like? Let's say you're sitting in a room so cold that you can see your breath. You keep an ice cube in front of your table. The ice cube is still. The temperature of the room is 27 degrees. You change into 28 degrees, 29 degrees, 30 degrees, 31 degrees. There is no change until 31 degrees. But when you change it to 32 degrees, the ice cube starts melting. The temperature seems so insignificant, but it has unlocked a huge change in the ice cube. Similarly, habits take some time to cross a threshold in our life and unlock our potential. I would like to conclude by saying a quote said by Jacob Bree, when nothing seems to help, I go and look at a stone cutter hammering away at his rock, perhaps a hundred times without a crack showing in it. But at the hundredth and first blow, it will split into two. And I know that it was not that last blow that did it, but all that had gone before. Thank you. It starts from great. What comes to your mind when you hear the word TV? Yes, it's entertaining device. Watching TV is quite popular. We all love watching TV. Adults like to watch news, sports, movies and dramas, while children love to watch cartoons. Too much screen time has many bad effects. It can put pressure on our eyes and cause many eyesight problems. People who, people who watch TV for long has, has a tendency to overeat and easily become obese. It can also, it leads to many health issues and heart disease. Most of the content shown is not add any value to our lives. In some content they are showing violence and criminal activities which can harm children. And it can also kill, kills imagination and creativity of children and promote, uh, promote negativity behavior in them. They cause 
More, nowadays, we can easily see children wearing spectacles. The cause is due to its <coughs> cause is due to such, uh, exposing uh, into such things. The main cause is due to its obvious blue light, which can change the pattern of the children's and <coughs> change the sleeping pattern of children's and uh, adults. Now, watching TV is educative, but it can harm our daily routine activities and and deprives us from reading habits. We can also violent viewing ha, a, provides more antisocial life and decreases uh, positive social life. Such negative social lives can leads to many social isolation and positive social life can leads to many relationship and success success bad the some of the bad effects of tv are it can put it discourages exercise it discourages reading it can it can waste our time more than 4 hours seeing tv can cause Many TV can cause many uh, diseases like churning neck and back, uh, sleep problems, sleep problems, depression, anxiety, and low test scores in children. Children should limit screen time one to two hours. Adults should also try to limit screen time. It it decreases your development of your brain. It turns you into a lazy, lazy person and some of the good aspects of TV are uh, you can do that things when you are trying to do when you are seeing TV like becoming a scientist, improving a new robot, you can do such things while seeing TV. TV can, TV can be educate TV can be educative. It's a part of our education. It teaches us many things. Let me tell you a story. How a boy affected because of TV. Once upon a time, there lived a boy called Ramesh. He was he was so naughty, but he was good at studies. He was seeing only TV when one day TV when his friends called for playing. He did not went. When he grew up day by day, in his home TV was not there. He was so worried what now I will do. When he went to his friends, come we can play, he told. But his friends, no, we can't play with you because when we called you, you did not come. Ramesh and me want to convey a message to you all. Don't see TV. Please help your parents, help your parents, do exercises, be healthy. And how to limit screen time? Yes, we have to play, we have to run, we have to do daily exercises. Some of uh, us, even we can take an example of brothers and sisters. We can, they will fight who is the best. They will keep many obstacle race, running race, bike race, scooty race, cycle race. But, but they are seeing TV, TV law. For that, they are educative and more healthy. They can also, more healthy, they can also cause many uh, brain development and can also have many, many bad bad effects also in tv they are showing many good shows like uh, kids shows like chota beam uh, little singam but children's who are very naughty they are beating the parents for just the tv when parents told them to exercise more don't see tv they are Beating the parents, they're scolding the parents. Some of us, because of TV, can TV, they're 
beating their parents in stick because of TV. In some places, the TV is popular and it can cause many, uh, many good social life for US, US people. Thank you. Greetings to one and all present here. I am Malvani from grade 7. So, before starting with my speech, I want to arise two questions in everyone's mind. First, what if sun didn't exist? Second, what is the importance of sun? You will get the answers of these questions from my speech itself. So, no need to worry. Sun is the main source of energy. Sun is the source of solar power. It is one of the renewable resources of our earth. So it is very, very precious to all of us. Sun is located at the center of our solar system. It is the only planet which provides us with both warmth and light. Let me arise one more question over here. Is there any other planet on our solar system which provides us with warmth and light? The answer is absolutely no, none other than our great sun. Our sun even provides us with vitamin D, which is very essential for all living organisms. Have you heard your parents or your teachers or your elders saying that you have to go and play outside in the sun so that you will get vitamin D? Yes, every one of us have heard it from our teachers, elders or from our parents. Even there are many juices and liquids which are prescribed by the doctor if you lack vitamin D or if you want to boost your vitamin D. This shows the importance of vitamin D in our life which is produced or provided by a great sun. Our sun is located at the center of our solar system. Our sun plays a vital role in the process of photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is the process by which plants prepare their own food with the help of some raw materials. I am not going very deep into this concept as we are learning this concept from our grade 3. I just want to tell one more thing which is very important about it. Which is photosynthesis is the only biological process on our earth which provides us with a abundant amount of oxygen. Hence, in the absence of sun, the photosynthesis will stop leading to no release of oxygen in the environment. Just imagine without oxygen what we living organisms will do for our respiration. It is a huge question mark in all of our heads. Sun has been an object of respect in many cultures all throughout our human history. The people of Hindu religions consider sun as a god. This shows what impact we living organisms have created on our sun. This shows the importance of sun in our life as they are considering sun as a god. And god is a very special person in everyone's life. I don't say that god is a very special person in everyone's life. As even there are people in this world who don't even believe and respect god. But he is the only person who has created us. He is the only person who has made life exist on this earth. Life possible on this earth. Sun not only plays a vital role in the process of photosynthesis, but also in our day-to-day -day lives. How? In generating electricity, in heating up of water, and in drying our clothes. Imagine, if there is no sun, how will dry our clothes? It will be a huge task for us. We will leave all our work and start drying our clothes. It seems funny, right? But it's true. It will what happen if there is no sun? Our earth would be dark, our, our life would become dark without sun and electricity. There would be no electricity in our earth. Basically, our sun helps us to differentiate between day and night. If there is no sun, we will be not able to say or identify or differentiate between day and night. Has whole day will be experiencing a night time. Still, if you want to make out if it is a day or a night, you have to go and check the time. You have to move by the time. You have to travel by the time. Our day 
starts with sunrise and ends with sunset we all like watching sunrise and sunset in the beach has it gives us a heavenly feel on a cloudy day or a winter morning we all wait for the sun to come out <coughs> sun's energy also helps in the growth of crops thus in the absence of sun the growth of crops as well as the farming will get destroyed the farmer will end up with a huge loss now again there will be question arise in our minds which is the farmer will go up in a huge loss the farming will get destroyed how it will impact us the living organisms have you thought with that farmers and farming what we living organisms will do for our food no we don't even have time to think about it but we simply underestimate them i have seen many people in my life i experienced it myself they simply say farming is very easy it is all about planting crops harvesting them selling them and getting a huge profit but do you know what farming is really it is about a huge patience and a great hard work which we people normally don't have we don't even have 50% of it but farmers do it is a whole lifelong process but why they are doing this they are doing this our benefit but we don't even think about it we don't even care about it <clears throat> in our life everything is connected it can be directly or indirectly who thought farmers and farming have you thought what will be the situation of us the living organisms in our earth everything matters every action matters we all easily underestimate anyone in our life but do we think what are the benefits provided by them sun's energy also helps or also enables the water cycle what will happen with that water cycle we all are blank we don't even have answers for these questions even there are many poems and songs which bring out the importance of sun to our views summer sun is one of the poem belonging to this category i like to conclude my speech saying that sun and sun's energy both are important and permanent no matter where you go or how far you go you will always find sun hence sun and sun's energy both are important and permanent i also like to end my speech with a sweet quote which is related to my topic itself which is sun not only shines for few trees and flowers but for the world wide joy thank you everyone needs this everyone cannot live without this yes it is joyfulness a warm welcome to everyone This is Ashmita and my topic is the fact of joyfulness in life. There is no path to joyfulness. Joyfulness is the path to everything. Joyfulness comes Joyfulness comes from accepting who we are. Joyfulness means the mental and spiritual state of having a positive outlook. Meditation can bring joyfulness. It is immensely important for a person to be happy. Without a happy life, one becomes tired and exhausted. Uh, in a village, an old a old man lived. He was always gloomy. He constantly complained. so people in the village were tired of him they avoided him because his misfortune became contagious it was even unnatural and insulting to be happy next to him one day when he turned 80 years old something incredible happened and instantly everyone started hearing the rumor the old man is happy today He doesn't complain about anything. He smiles and even his face is freshened up. The whole village gathered together and the old man was asked, "What happened to you?" The old man replied, "Nothing special. 80 years I have been chasing happiness and it was useless. So I decided to live without happiness and just enjoy life. That's why I am happy now." so from this story we have we have get to know that don't chase happiness 
just enjoy life happiness will come to you i am very sure that each one of you want to achieve success in your life but if i ask you what is more important in your life happiness or success you would probably choose success as the more important element of your life which is good in a way but ha- you can be happy even without being successful happiness is not circumstantial but success is circumstantial many people associate success with happiness and they feel that they can be happy only if they are successful which shouldn't be the case we can be happy even if you don't own a big bangla huge car or fat bank balance etc but the most important thing is you must find what makes you happy in life there are some basic rules which you must adapt if you want to stay happy in life the first and most important rule is you must live in the present you might have failed in the past but the best thing is to seek lessons from those and move forward as whatever might be happened in the past cannot be changed in the present thus thus there is no use in lamenting over the past the second thing the second thing you must watch your attitude towards other competitors and should never nurture ill feelings towards them and you should not take your competition beyond a point where you start treating them as your rivals and get into any kind of enmity your will power must be strong enough to make you achieve what you want to but but you shouldn't position it as the whole happiness of your life you the greatest measure of success will always be the level of happiness you live in consistently the key to happiness lies in doing what one loves it's just the appreciation for being thankful for the everyday blessings for little things being with your family friends and relatives acceptance forgiveness peace of mind and self worth meditation can be can bring happiness if you be happy in your life you can achieve what you want to but if you don't be happy you can lose the most important thing in your life yes that is success happiness is more important like success you can live longer if you be happy you can you can be happy while while go making what what can make you happy and going to the places you like thank you greetings all the brain is deeper, deeper than the sea said by emily dickinson starting with this quote can you all imagine when i say we the humans only use 10% of our brain or let me just put into other words can you all imagine when i say that the 90% of our brain is just sitting out there and doing nothing let me come to the statement a little later before all why do we really need our brain this three pound organ is the seat of intelligence interpreter of our senses initiator of our body movements and controller of our behaviors this tiny little fist sized organ is the kings of the kings and the queens of the queens lying in its bony shell and washed by protective fluid the, f- the brain is a source th- the, the brain is the ultimate source for the quality that defines our humanity the the brain is the crown jewel of the human body 
and throughout the history philosophers have believed that the brain even even may house the intangible essence that makes us the, the, that makes us the human the soul and circling back to the beginning can you all imagine when i say that we the humans only use 10 percentage of our brain well i'm nandana here to speak on myth or reality we use only 10 percentage of our brain the idea that the humans use only 10 percentage of our brain is just a myth and it is one among the popular ones Rather than just being a myth, it has become a part of a pop culture. Many of you here have confused or misunderstood the term myth. So what is a myth? A myth is a traditional story or a legend that has been carried along the history, which tends to be a false statement, idea, or unbelief. A myth is a way of making sense in a senseless world. This myth has been around for over a century and has been perpetuated on TV shows, movies, and even on books. But in reality, we use all parts of our brain. And this brain myth has just been busted. Every part of our brain has specific function and each part is active at different times depending on what we are doing. For example, now if you are solving a mathematical equation or a physics equation, the part responsible for logic and reasoning works. Studies and fMRI scans show that even simple tasks like eating, sleeping requires activation of multiple areas of our brain. While, this, while there's still a lot to learn about the brain and which is a very interesting subject to study about. Researchers still tend to fill the gap between fact and fiction. For something to run so smooth for such a long time without any disturbance, there must be a smooth startup, right? So how did this myth even arise? This myth mostly arose from the misunderstandings or even called the misinterpretations from the neurological researchers held at the late 19th century. The phase where intense researches, discoveries and new inventions took place. It was discovered that the brain contained glial cells, or the ninth cell of the brain, and along with local neurons, which constituted of very minute functions. A neurologist named James W. Callard pointed out that many neuroscientists knew about the local neurons and the glial cells, and the misunderstandings of the functions of these cells might have led to the 10 percentage myth. The, brain, the human brain is the most complex model. Along with performing millions of acts, it composes concretos, it, is, it issues its manifesto, and comes up with elegant solution to equations. It's a wellspring of human be feelings, behavior, and experiences. So it's no doubt that the human brain remains a mystery unto itself. Adding to the mystery is the contention that we humans only use 10 percentage of the brain. And if only a regular folk could tap the rest 90 percentage, they could become savants who remember up to 20,000 decimal points, or perhaps even possess telekinetic powers. Though an alluring idea that the 10 percentage myth is so wrong that it's almost laughable, this particular statement was quoted by a famous neurologist named Barry Jordan. He also states that the human brain uses 3 percentage of the body's weight and 20 percentage of the body's energy. But there's no definite culprit to bring the blame on for starting this legend. But the notion has been linked to the American psychologist who argued that we are making use of very small amount of our mental and physical resources. It has also been associated with Albert Einstein who supposedly used it to explain his comic towering intellect. This is one of the Hollywood's favorite bit, bits of pseudoscience and entertainment, that humans use only 10 percentage of a brain. And awakening the rest 90 percentage, which supposedly remains dormant, allows ordinary man to express extraordinary human ab ab mental abilities. There are several sci-fi movies under this category, and one of the most famous ones are The Phenomenon, Lucy, and The Limitless. The main idea or the logic behind all of these movies is unlocking the 90 percentage knowingly or unknowingly, and and possessing the superhuman abilities. The most fascinating and interesting superhuman abilities projected on the screens of these movies are the ability to predict earthquake, the ability to learn foreign languages in instantly, the ability to learn, the ability to write a novel overnight, and even possess telekinetic powers, which allows them to control electric fields, magnetic fields, and even their own metabolic activities. This is very cool, right? This might be very interesting and amazing to watch on the screens, but what you see on the screens of the movies are just the perspective and not the truth. This ready-made bit for the re this ready-made blueprint for the fantasy films is also one among the favorite for the general public. In a survey conducted, 65 percent of 65 percentage of the respondents have agreed with the statement that we, we humans use only 10 percentage of our brain. This is very shocking to hear, right? Why does this myth even still continue when it is so wrong? Somehow, somewhere, someone started this myth and the popular media keeps on repeating this, false, repeating this false statement. And soon, everyone believes this statement regardless of evidence. 
According to the believers of this myth, if we could use more of our brain, then we, then we could perform super memory feats or even maybe another men fantastic mental abilities, like maybe even I can move an object with a, sim with a single thought. This 10 percentage myth has undoubtedly motivated many people to strive for greater creativity and productivity in their life. But like so many uplifting myths are so good to be true that even the truth of the matter seems to be the least important aspect. Obviously, this is a bad news for people hoping to find Obviously, this is a bad news for people hoping to find the secret in becoming a genius overnight. And what I find most intriguing about this myth is how it disappoints people when they get to know this is not true and they have been believing the lie for so long. But the good news though is that hard work still works and there's a plenty of reason that, that, that you can still build up your brain power, like by challenging your own mental tasks, like by either playing a musical instrument or reading a novel or doing arithmetic problems. We would all like to be better, and we can be better if we try. But sadly, it isn't going to, it isn't going to work if you just sit and find the unused portion of the brain. Examining the myths and how they arise and persist is the only way that brain could indeed study itself. Thank you. When many of us speak about perfection, we would suggest few names stating that they are perfect according to me in studies, in output, this, that, and so on. But whom we believe is perfect is really not. Perfection is in the eye of the beholders. You, it means that perfection is something based on someone's opinions. Greetings to all. This is Danyashree. Here to speak about perfection is an illusion. We are trying to reach the peak of the mountain that is untouchable. If we want everything to be perfect for us to start, we are likely to let ourselves down. Perfection is an illusion. When I say this, many of us create our own interpretation behind the meaning, right? All of us create this picture perfect figures in our heads whom we believe is the perfect mole in the society. Majority of us walk around and glance around in our surrounding, picking the perfect people in the distance. Is it right what we all are doing? A lot of us in the society is trying to change many factors about our appearance. I think if I'm not wrong. Because we will be never satisfied with what we have and who we are. We are constantly wanting to change something about our appearance. Just go and look at yourself in the mirror. Point out all the faults you hate about yourself. I used to be so guilty of this. That is, comparing myself with the other people's. I did this majority of my days. But now I look at myself and love myself for my imperfection. So now we have to start teach ourselves to stop comparing with others. Because we are unique and special in our own way. Express yourself. It may be with your outfits, your artworks, music, poetry and so on, whatever, and whatever makes you confident. You are wonderful, just the way you are. You need not be lovable. You need not be tall, thin, rich, or any other factors to be lovable, because you already are. And it's time to show this love to yourself. So at some point of our life, we have to start somewhere, right? Was Tiger Woods an expert in the first kick in the golf club. Do you know any highly specialized surgeons being an expert in their field from the day one? Of course no, right? For any expert in any field, it took years and years of practice. That may also include the modern day arts. That means that even though we all are imperfect, we could make things best and be an expert but never a perfect one. Not all the kids could hold the pencil at the age of three and not all the adults at their 20s will be working. All of us created our own perfect people in our heads, right? But what we see is a cover with a, without a summary. We create our own summary in our heads what their life probably appears as. But just imagine if you got to know about them 
and their story your perspective on them being perfect might change or surely change on inside as where the pages lies once they start to speak the pages start to flip and you will eventually hit by the ch chapters of their story one by one we all have the habit of sitting down and scrolling through the social media for whole day right we come across many pictures posted by our friends relatives neighbors and who all we know just wishing we would look like them but the picture what you see was just captured in the one second of their life so what about the remaining 86399 second of their one day life you don't see it right because you got to see the just one second of their life you see them at their best you see them at the social media setting you don't even know who they are and so why do so many of us wish we would look like them when you don't know what their story entitles first of all why do we care if perfection is an illusion just think over it there is no human being anywhere on the planet being perfect imperfect persons cannot make perfect things you agree on this right so you agree that perfection is an illusion and therefore an unattainable goal so how about letting the thoughts go away and just move on to another train of thoughts chasing perfection prevent a person from experiencing his life the things that cannot be controlled like laughter with our loved ones development of friendship getting wet in the dots and jumping in the rain puddles will surely miss when you are focused on chasing perfection a person need to allow himself or herself the opportunity to not control over everything to experience the unexpected to focus on the present laugh without a script jump in the puddles let the clothes get wrinkled or strained and maybe just maybe let the pillow out of its place it's okay to fail it's okay to make mistake a person can make mistake a person can be late a person can color outside the learn line experience it learn from your life the world is full of people trying to be perfect being perfect be one of them who's not trying to be perfect and learn that perfection does not exist we are human beings we make mistake and it's part of our nature no one will be perfect and no one will be ever perfection is an illusion even the moon is not perfect but still it is the epitome of love and beauty thank you all greetings to all this is baladeja shri you have recently heard anything about a head at work or you might heard people with high emotional intelligence what is emotional intelligence and why is so important emotional intelligence is the ability to understand one's our emotions and understand others emotions a high emotional intelligence helps us to build a good relationship and reduces team work a high emotional intelligence means being aware of our emotions and capability to control our emotions in you and understanding others emotions let me start with self awareness if you are managing your self management then it is easy to go with your self awareness self awareness is the ability to recognize once your strengthness weakness your thoughts your behavior and your emotions if you are feeling so sad or in uninspired in your role for example you might have to check or investigate yourself why you are feeling so sad or not inspired and you have to understand the cause of emotions then you are in the better place 
to approach or take an action such as putting your hand to take an additional walk which makes you to inspire or approach yourself now let's talk about self management have you ever thought without self management you have done a work or you have done a team work absolutely no without self management we could not do anything most of the people will express bad moods like anger stress self management is the ability to control all these emotions in you like for example uh, some members will be uh, they'll do drawings or readings they'll sit alone uh, which makes them relief from anger stress these are all the example of self management uh, for self management main thing is motivation without motivation a human cannot take a single step of goals or projects motivation is most important motivation is essential part to take an action or to move an action uh, sometimes we feel some setbacks or obstacles or we may check for motivations which makes you to inspire or push you always forward uh there are many motivations lead to negative feelings uh so uh, we are easily attracted to negative feelings there are many achievements done by motivation let me say you an example how they done whatever they do a work they ask for feedbacks they monitor themselves and they improve their knowledge skills and the output comes as motivation self awareness is the key part of emotional intelligence because it's uh, knowing your thoughts behavior and your emotions help you to build a good relationship and tr tr uh, develop your trust on others and other communication skills and other than soft skills there are two types of self awareness internal self awareness and external self awareness internal self awareness that which you have to improve by yourself you have to improve your thoughts behavior and your emotions internal self awareness is the ability to understand about yourself the next is external self awareness external self awareness that which you have to understand about others like you have to understand others thoughts emotions feelings impact on others external self awareness is the ability to understand others before centuries they have found many theories methods to improve or to control our self awareness so how can you begin or improve our emotional intelligence let me say you some solution first is your thoughts your thoughts and emotions are more tight tighter if you want to know your emotions then you have to know your thoughts take any day and uh, think how you are answering to yourself how you are answering to others uh, or how you are answering to any situations take a note of it then you can know your thoughts or thought process uh, you are noticing your thoughts are going negative then you have to change it into a positive you may not even believe in any one situations it definitely help you uh, we won't depend on others like when we won't depend on others it will help you uh, your thoughts will help you second one is your body when we are thinking we may get in physical response that people may notice or may not notice uh, think uh, from where you are getting 
uh, the answer from your body. Like you're getting in facial expressions or you're getting uh, in the heart rate or in the voice or somewhere else. Uh, take a think and take capture and control by yourself. Third is emotions. Uh, emotions, people do not judge by our habit. People even though judge by our emotions. Emotions are most important to interact with others. If you fail to recognize all these things, then you cannot improve your emotional intelligence because uh, you are going to travel throughout future with emotions. If your uh, elements are these are all things are healthier, uh, then you can make your life happier and positive. Thank you. Hi everyone, I am Lakshna. At some point in our life, we all realize that one day we will die. But is the death really the end? And that's my topic, life after death. Throughout history, we have questioned that, is there life after death? Uh, Along the way, our religion and various philosophers answered to this commonly asked question. Through the years, there have been many philosophers that do not believe in life after death. Among them is David Hume. David Hume do not believe in life after death. He only believed in what he could see. He felt that if you can't see your soul, then you must not exist. If, if you can't see your soul, then you can't exist. There are many philosophers that does believe in life after death and they are Spinoza. Spinoza do not be, they believe in life and he believed that there is a life and it is separated into hell and heaven. Who done wrong things in life will move to hell and who done good things in life moves to heaven. And this was just his belief, not us. And Christian religions. Christian religions are the ultimate proof for life after death. They believe that Jesus died and after three days he rose again. And 40 days he, uh, he was alive in earth. This was an ultimate proof for life after death. Buddhists, Buddhists also be, do not believe in life after death. They, they do not believe in God too. They told that God do not show any way to them. It was like Buddhist, if one person dies, he or she will reborn again and again. This was their belief and various philosophers and religions offer their beliefs and opinions to this answer. There was even many philosophers that do not believe in life after death. There are two beliefs in human nature that are materialism and mentalism. Materialism is like the materialist will only believe in what they believe the most important thing in life is only money and they only believe that there is no soul and there is no evidence, there is no scientific evidence for this and this will be like they told that there is no soul and it will it is not an evidence for a body and they told that there will not be a soul after death 
and mentalism is like they only use mental skills and innovative abilities and hindu sams told that atman it is a soul and they believe in only if one person dies in this life and he can't memorize the other previous life if one person die in this life he will reborn to next life and he will never know and he will not have any memory of previous life there are and osho told like you are better to speak about life present here and it is not that important to speak life after death and there was like spinoza did believe in life after death and he told that if one person dies he will reborn again and again and this will continue till he reaches nirvana nirvana is like a person who achieve in insight and wisdom will reach nirvana and osho told like it is a strange thing like a, everyone born with a closed hand and everybody dies with a open hand and this was a strange thing to osho there was and buddha was literally made himself a buddha and he literally made himself nirvana there was there was even many ph- philosophers that they believe only in life after death and this was not our point of view that's only their point of view so it's not impo- it's not literally thing like we should believe in them and i conclude that first it is better to love the life in it is better to love the life now and we can meet you are capable to meet the life after death thank you there is no illusion greater than fear i am hasni to speak about fear is your worst enemy whether you believe it or not fear is your worst enemy fear is your worst enemy or best friend it's like a fire if you can control it it will cook for you if you can't control it it will burn everything and destroy you people fear of failure fear what others will say and begin to doubt their capabilities fear is a reason behind failure sickness giving up bad relationships and so on we are afraid of the past the future the unseen and even death fear the word those mere mentions in most of it you would have heard and read that fear is your greatest enemy you it day after day month after month year after year we keep nutrating it such that it start feathering our entire exist so just as to comfort you fear has mentioned in all is yes, all religions and spiritual dons across the world since writing came and exist so you are not the first or only person facing it in fact each and every human and every living creature afraid or fear for others you have also heard or read that universe is space and time have you ever wondered how your body occupies space and your mind is in time isn't it your mind is either thinking about the past the future which is nothing but time your mind also when the past and future are infinite present is just a moment and is precisely the reason why it is so difficult to be in the present and very easy to be in the past or in the future let me tell you a small exercise to overcome your fear do a small exercise 
discard all your distractions from you sit in a blank room don't do anything for 30 minutes let all your thoughts flows in and out of your brain if any thought stuck in between just move to the another thought write your thoughts in a note and ask yourself a two question is it to be worried or fear about right now and the worst case scenario in present this this exercise will help you to bring all your fears out and the action plan to present here is an example when a man goes and buys a lottery ticket he is thinking that he will not win it in fact each and every lottery ticket buyer truly believe that he will win it will he what you do is an action today of buy a ticket hope to win it because it is to be a hope that makes you as a human imagine a day that nothing in front of you this was a terrible imagine right just think about it animals don't hope for tomorrow or worry about tomorrow only humans do that Here is a story. One, once upon a time, there was a sand who proposed some magical powers. One day, the sand was in a deep meditation. A little mouse was running to the sand and asking that, "I am very afraid of the cat. Please change me as cat." The sand was pity on him and changed him as a cat. A week passed. Again, the little mouse. was running and coming to the sign telling that i want to change as a dog so i don't want to be afraid of the dog i can live a happy and peaceful life again the sign changed him as a dog a month passed uh, again the little mouse of as a dog came to the sign and requested him change as a tiger so he don't want to be afraid of the any animals and can live a happy and peaceful life in the forest the sign thought that this was a good idea and changed him as a tiger the tiger went happy and peacefully to live a happy life again the one day the hunter came to hunt the tiger the tiger was running fast to the saint and telling him to change as a hunter the saint also changed a month passed the hunter was crying and begging to the saint telling that please change me as something people are avoiding me the saint changed and replied to him that whatever form i change you the fear is going to remain with you so the form i change you doesn't matter the the fear that does need to be changed so overcome your fear and live a happy and peaceful life whom ever and where you are the saint replied again the saint changed him as a original form as a little mouse from this you have to learn fear is not always your worst enemy it's it is also a best friend the next thing is change your mindset i recently watched a youtube channel related to public speaking the speaker was telling to the audience that i'll get a panic attack before going to speak so he said that he will overcome the fear and change his mindset he would sit in a quiet study room in a comfortable chair and relax himself for 10 minutes he would say himself very positive quiet like that <clears throat> i'm going to overcome this fear i'm overcoming it i'm confident and i am at this case this is positive affirmations tell your subconscious mind positive relax and listen to them and start believing it and next thing is physical activity stimulate your physical activities like yoga running and dancing i conclude by saying that fear is not always your enemy but also your best friend fear 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 realize that we should be prepared fear pushes down from giving our best i think fear should be there for everyone because it says that we are alive and pushes us to do more thank you Hi, I am Danyashree. How many of us have grown up with people telling us like, "Boys, don't cry," or "You must sit with your legs crossed if you are female." I have 
always wondered, why are there so many of these unspoken rules hanging about? As I grown up, I will be told that because I am a girl, I need to be neat in my handwriting, being quiet and demure. Really, why? Today, I am going to speak in the topic, gender stereotype. Gender stereotype is one of the topic we don't explicitly talk about that in our day-to-day -day interactions. But it's something that we all know it exists around us. In fact, we sometimes make judgments and decisions of people based on gender stereotype. Gender stereotype is a generalized view of traits and roles that are oft to be possessed by males and females. Well, it may seem innocuous when we hear people make remarks like those I have mentioned. I think we need to stop right there and think again. Gender stereotype adversely affect the self-esteem of a growing child and its impact will be carried to adulthood. Men and women contribute to a stable society by expressing their own uniqueness and supporting one another. Society needs both men and women to respect one another and work towards a community built on self-respect. Effects of gender stereotype affecting family life. Traditionally, women remain at home and underlook all the domestic works and household chores, including nurturing of infants. Men work outside the home to earn the livelihood. As the two sides get older, men are supposed to be powerful and masculine, while women are supposed to be sensitive and feminine. Everyone, especially young boys and girls, need to be educated on the topic gender stereotype and gender roles. Teachers can help students see the harmful effects of believing in stereotypes. As the two men can support other men and women can support other women, we all have unique experiences to share. If you think that someone is perfect to wearing gender stereotype, talking openly to them about the reality of the harm might go a long way. Everyone has a role to play in fighting gender bias and inequality. You can, you can fight against gender, gender roles through social medias. In a, in a school environment, they can affect a young person's classroom experiences, academic performance, subject choice, and well-being. One is constantly bombarded by gender stereotype from everywhere, from parents to teachers and of course the media. Since birth, it's common to see parents dress as they are baby girls in pink and baby boys in blue. In fact, this is how hospitals differentiate between the sex of babies in the nursery. We prescribe the girls should play with dolls and indulge in play pretend, while boys should play with trains, cars and guns. We are told it's, it's not okay for girls to cry. It's okay for girls to cry, but boys who cry are criticized for being weak and emotional. We are told it's okay for boys to get scrapped on their knees from playing, but not okay for girls because girls are not supposed to have scars. We girls are supposed to look pretty and have lovely skin. The problem with this is, in reality, things are not so black and white. There are boys who are emotional and girls who are sporty and spend more time in outdoors and hence get scrapped on their knees. In a, in a school and in a classroom site, they can, we have the following methods. Boys are slower than girls to read. 
girls are naturally quieter than boys boys are better at sport than girls boys and girls can work together or be friends each other i'm glad my parents did not subscribe to an unreasonable gender stereotype doing so will limit a child's potential who may be talented in an area that is deemed unsuitable for his or her gender it's like we can't be who we want to be and this is what and this is what affects the self esteem and self worth of a growing child i believe given the freedom of who they are and who they want to be we will allow each individual to value themselves better so please try to overcome the stereotype by plan meaningful meetups watch and then talk think before you speak let toys be toys for girls and boys choose colors based on your based on your mind learn skills based on what interests you participate equally in household chores be friends with all of the genders talk against gender gender roles i feel gender stereotype should not just remain as a coffee shop talk but rather a more considered effect to question and stop gender stereotype from being a perfect to aid thank you hi i am adiyoli fitting in allows you to blend in with everyone else but being different allows you to be yourself and to be more creative and also to be unique said by sonia parker imagine that we are all in the same types in the world like we are all in the same types of personality we are all in the same types of doing things and we are all in the same ways and also we are all in the uh, same types of tastes in the foods and uh, musics it's hard to imagine right do you think it could create a world as a better place of course not it could not create the world as a better place and the lives of the people will become very boring and dull and do you think differences can find many solution for an issue yes of course differences can find many solution for an issue if you for example if you stuck in a uh, basic issue you can uh, you need to find a difference for successing in the solution and don't think you are but we are all thinking that differences are not important who all are thinking that differences are important they are all succeeding in their lives and making the world as a better place and why differences matter differences matter in three ways and the first one they create balance in the world all are different from others some are intelligent some are creative some are responsible some are not responsible and some are introverts and others are extroverts and some people like to sit in a quiet place and write a story and comics and some people like to share their thoughts for thousands of people in the world and and some people try to laugh others and some people hope to save the other people's lives and they create a balance in their lives in the world and second one they enforces skill development in the world think in the world all are having same skills it do you think it could create a better 
place for the world? Of course not. It could not create the world as a better place. And for example, take a designer of cloth, all are doing, and what they will do for food, they will suffer a lot in the future. So th there should be a balance in the lives, but there is no balance in that life. And the third one is they ensure diversity. In the world, all are different from uh, their culture and religions. Their ideas and their beliefs of their culture and religions makes them to succeed in their lives and makes the world as a better place. And also, their ideologies can make them to be a successful person in their lives. And uh, think that uh, we all are thinking that in some ways uh, all are not different. For example, we can take the persons like neurological and physical difference and the guys who wear the dresses like girls and girls who wear the dresses like boys and they all are uh, called as outcast. They have been hurted very much because of them calling us outcast or weirdo and because we are all not fitting with them and also uh, we are all not uh, doing uh, good things for them and we are all not helping in any situations for them and also uh, we are all feeling broken when they are near to them so please avoid that and please be fixed with them and uh, help in all the situation when they are facing any issues and also uh, please uh, try to avoid that you are feeling broken when you are near to them uh, there is a two short story that is the first one the boys the boy who is studying in the school in the from coming from poor family and they and his friends all are rich and they they were been making fun of him because of his look and it hurts him and the second story is a young man who is uh, working in a company and his and his uh, and his officers all are rich more than him and it because of that they were teasing him a lot and it also it hurts him so please don't judge a person by his appearance judge the person by his skills and knowledge and please be unique to this world and make a world as a successful so i am concluding to that that's all thank you hi all i am b harish my topic how to be an self employed in your mind questions will be there what is self employed why we should do self employed these questions will be there in your mind let me clear it self employed is nothing but a man who is working in his office without anyone's help is called a self employed let me start with the story a man who is working in no office he is a rich man and one more man who is working in the office he is a poor man they both were good friends in the office but after after moving sometimes a rich man did not even speak with him and he hated him very much so that so that poor man was worried much and the whole office was still teaching him very much so that he left the office and he started his own business which which he likes more and he showed his talent very much and he, day and night he worked very much 
so he got success in that and he got success in that and after a few months he started a new company the rich man came for came for the interview for selecting to the company and he she selected in the first level and he and he went to meet the manager he don't know who is the manager but the manager was a poor man so that so that he he was uh, thinking that what and all he was teached teached him very much he was hated but a poor man said whether you are teaching me or not so i got I, so i left the company and i and i started my own business which i like more and he showed his talent very much so please show your talent and please be and self employ and a real incident happened in india north arco in south india a village name called as palaki palayam in the village women were employed and uh, uh, they did not even get more profit in that they show, they joined together and they started their own business which they like very much and they have worked day and night and they have success in that their job is like collecting land from government and collecting marble stones which they can sell in good price to the companies and in that they got freedom and they got freedom in the to work day and night they got respect from who are who are dominated them and they got more profit in that and they have joined at their children in good school and colleges and they also have learned some uh, they also have learned english for their uh, job to sell their stones uh, stones to other countries to other countries in a daily life you are seeing a re- incidents like a whole villages or joining together making some cooking things and uploading in youtube if one if one video reached more than 1 million they can get more profit in that and this is also one of a example for self employ and nowadays self employ or decreasing the olden days more people were as a self employed as and the, this is all of the uh, one of the part time job which they can do their own business and this is also this also and the educated youths were in, uh, increasing year by year but the jobs were decreasing and the companies were decreasing year by year so many so many youths were getting loan loan from banks and they are starting their own business and who who are not educated they are joining in railway departments and they did not even get more money uh, they did not even get money and they are they can't run their families and they are going to the po- poverty line and please uh, i'm giving small request for them to be to be and self employ they can get more money in that they can get more respect from that and the engineering graduates or showing their talents like making some small products like like uh, small products and selling their websites and uh, shops also and uh, governments were governments were sh- governments were making some small products like plastic goods and electric electronical gadgets and etc these are they are doing and selling to the com- uh, selling to the Uh, who are not who are ed- who are keeping some small products in that they are getting more profit for giving more for giving for uh, giving their uh, goods like in you know, a more ma- more profits and the who are getting the goods they did not even get profits so the government said please decrease the values for get values for the goods to get, to get who are not educated and who are in a poverty line they can't get uh, they can't get the things things which are high so that the people so done strikes and they got uh, they got uh, and they have uh, 
they have got from approval to the governments and they can and the governments were selected them and they have got they have decreased their uh, money to get them uh, get their products and this i'm going to conclude that uh, if you are self employed your dignity will increase in the society and you can get more respect from the peoples and you can get more profit in that uh, if you want more profits and if you want be a self if you want uh, go, get more profit in that please be a self employed thank you every scientist dream is to achieve in their life achieve in their dreams and also achieve in their inventions i'm gonna say tell a scientist called nikola tesla who found the ac current you may think what is my ac current ac current is known as alternative current which we can change the frequency of the protons and neutrons so that we can achieve to the longer distances like 200 to 300 kilometers so that we can use it for higher efficiency devices like miners drillers trains so etc so also you can reduce the size and use you can use it for a led small bulbs and small things so i will say is biography his biography starts in a poor poor family in the small village he is one one time he was attacked by a unknown diseases at that time they can't identify which disease was uh, affected by at that time he was dreaming like he is holding a millions of uh, what current in his hand with without attacking him so that time he was making a cre- creation with which the future is going to use that and he woke up and said like mom and dad i w- i'm going to create a uh, i'm going to create a machine that future is going to use every day and every life so i want to become a electrical engineer and also a scientist a good physicist so he said to his dad like that and his dad replied no you should not be like that i pray to god you have to do a favor for god until you die so nicolas tesla pleased to him and said please dad i want to become and i if i created that machine everyone is going to use that in the future so i go, i will get a good name in the society also in the others world so after that many years passed away and he got graduated as a physicist a electrical engineer and also a good scientist after that he don't have any money to move on his life he was a homeless he don't have a money or a food to live at that time he saw a advertisement by thomas alva edison the advertisement was like who is going to fix my device they are going to get a uh, 1500 dollars and the 1500 dollars additionally was going to tell the uh, correct explanation for the fault so nicolas tesla saw that and accepted and he went there after going there he fixed the uh, problem and also he explained what is the fault and also he say, gave the more uh, points to upgrade the uh, upgrade the device and also be a uh, how how we can reduce the fuel consumption and we can increase the productivity so after saying that uh, edison was shocked how how could this person be like this at the young age he is he is like an brilliant after after uh, solving that nicolas tesla asked edison where is my 3000 dollars he said like uh, i can't give you 3000 dollars but i can give you the chief engineering posting in my company after getting the chief engineer com- posting in the company from next day he went to the job after going to the job he was working at until the night he was working 17 to 18 hours a day and the balance hours he will take a nap in that in the sleeping time he will dream like also he is making a blueprint of a machine a big big mission he will c- complete in his dreams as a blueprint and the, uh, he will uh, make it in his lab once he was dreaming like he was making an ac current generator first i was i explained what is my ac current so same like that he was dreaming and he was making that after making that uh, he completed that blueprint in real life also after completing that he went to the he he went to edison and said sir this is the new invention of mine 
so please accept this and i will give you more points about this and this is a better better than dc current you may all think what's my dc current wait i will explain dc current dc current is known as direct current which we cannot change the frequency of protons and neutrons it always travels in a straight path and also it is a shorter distances so that we need a lots of money and lots of generators to the 10 10 kilometers or a big big uh, power plants so that's a waste of money it's a huge uh, consumption of money and few, few, huge uh, consumption of energy so we should not do uh, it's not a big deal so edison said Oh, this is my, my DC current is better than yours because everyone are using DC current in the world. E even in the New York, they are using most of the DC current in this world. So this is not a, that much big project. Just get out. He, he, he insulted the Nicholas Tesla and he, he said he just get out. And after g g coming out, Nicholas Tesla uh, fixed that after completing this thing, I want to become a great scientist than him. He, d he worked a day and night like a ghost and he co completed the working model of a miniature AC current generator. After creating that AC current generator, also he showed to the Thomas Alva Edison. After showing to the uh, Thomas Alva Edison, oh, you have made the model, it's not a big deal. That day I even I told you, it's not a big deal than, uh, than my DC current. It's not useful, just take it out. But one thing, I will give you $50,000 when you complete a big generator, a real generator keeping in a power plant. And I will give you $50,000. After that, Tesla here and after next one year, he completed the huge, uh, huge AC current generator. After creating the AC current generator, he also fixed it in the power plant and he started working that. So after working that, he called Edison and said, Sir, I have completed this. So what, uh, what you are going to do? I uh, give my $50,000. And third time, he insulted him and said, yeah, it's just a few, few generators. I need a bigger generator. You want to become a famous pe person and famous generator in the world. So I can't give you $50,000. Just get out of my country. You're just uh, useless. Sir, so after, after hearing this, the Nikola Tesla got, a few, uh, got a heart broke and he said, Sir, I will w one day I will get a good name in this world. So why are we not giving a uh, chance to everyone? If we give chance to everyone, everyone will change this world once day. So what I am trying to say is, give chance, trust everybody and give everybody a chance. Thank you. Hi, I am Shiva Darshan. If you do not kill the pollution, the pollution will kill you. Yes, the pollution is the major problem across the country. The pollution is from vehicle, industries and etc. To overcome the vehicle pollution, I have a solution. Yes, it is electric vehicle. My topic is, is it good to introduce electric vehicle? Coming from the electric vehicles and renewable source, which can, can be renewed and obtained by the process of solar, geothermal and biomass. And fo but fossil fuels are obtained after millions, millions of years after human burial, plants and animal burial. So it is, pro it is obtained by process like mining and purifying. But, it dis but while coming to the electricity, it is a non-pollutional vehicle and it do not pollute the uh, environment and it keeps the people safe. I have seen the many situations in the petrol vehicles or diesel vehicles. The electric vehicle, electric vehicle is better because the petrol it starts leaking. We have a chance for burning because of the leakage of petrol. But electricity vehicle catches fire. But 99 percentage is safety. Some non-original equipment cause the fire because the some local brands vehicle uh, is China products which they use inside. When the battery gets heated, it have a chance to catch us fire. How to overcome the electric vehicle from catching fire? Yes, to overcome the electric vehicle from catching fire is charge the battery after the battery gets cooled down. Use original equipment. Do, do not use any local equipment. See the battery when the battery, check the battery temperature. And while coming to the, my favorite car is Kia EV6. Yes, the Tesla is also an electric car which everyone know it is a famous famous electric vehicle and while coming to the vehicle i have tried is 
Avitric ride and OK fast F4. Avitric ride is my grandfather's scooter and I love it. The scooter speed of the scooter is 50 plus. The range of the scooter is 70 plus. And while coming to that, uh, it is a non-registration vehicle, so the speed of it would be limited inside the 50. When you go to registration, uh, registration uh, vehicle, the speed of it differs. And while coming to the batteries, the battery used for the electric vehicles are lithium-ion battery. Because more people charge the state, it is lightweight and more durable and strong and easily do not catch as fire and it is good. And the, some of the manufacturers in India are Luminous and Oikya Sukam and etc. India import batteries from China, Japan and some other countries. And everyone watches IPL from a small child to a big grandfather. Yes, IPL is this past two years was owned by Tata IPL. Tata IPL they keep a car called Taigo EV. This year only they kept, last year they kept a petrol or diesel vehicle, but this year they kept a Taigo EV because they, the Tata starts selling their electric vehicle to reduce the pollution. And while, while coming to OIKEA Fast F4, even I tried it and I have some point to suggest it. It is, the, it is known to be set the highest range vehicle. The ranges of the vehicle is 140 to 160, speed of it is some 70 plus. And while coming to the vehicle, it is good and the color of it green and we have more colors and some bad issue i was one time while traveling the battery has been stopped after again we charged it full and after 32 kilometers again it logged what was the complaint we don't know we gave in the company they said the battery has logged for 32 kilometer once so the battery would be logged and we gave in the company and they changed it within an, uh, two or three days and while coming to the uh, coming to the lifespan of the battery, it depends on the usage and the manufacturing. Where some of the people drive 100, uh, 100 kilometers per day, some of the people drive only 10 kilometers per day. Some drives more than that. It is because of the usage of the ve vehicle. When you use the battery more, it's, it gets it goes fast uh, fast and it has the electric vehicle gives only less range because due to the sp uh, the gas and uh, the petrol vehicle gets heat from engine, but whereas the electric vehicle should get heat from engine batteries. The optimal temperature needed for this is 21 to 20, 20 to 21 degrees Celsius. It should be obtained by battery, so the range of the battery drops down. And while coming to the rain, you can drive the vehicle in rain. It is no problem because they have a two to three protective lever which protect the battery, and a single drop of water will do not enter the battery. And while well, coming to the coming to the uh, pollution, the pollution is majorly caused in Delhi. Delhi because of the more populated and more industries are there in the Delhi, and Delhi is a high, high populated area, so the vehicles is increased. Without using the vehicle, anyone can't be, but the cost of the vehicle is high, and some of the disadvantages I I faced is it takes a lot of time for charging. It takes six to seven hours for charging. But this, but the government said they're going to keep on charging port where, as well as where we charge our, uh, fill our tank with petrol. Like that we can charge our batteries. But when we charge in our home, it takes six to seven years. And while coming the range and the speed of this is slow while comparing to automobiles in non-registration vehicle. Registration vehicle have a speed uh, to an automobiles. While comparing to uh, automobiles, the cost of the electric vehicle is high. And the vehicle do not have any sound. So, in the corners and everywhere, you should blow the horn or the people don't know that you are traveling to electric vehicle. And electric vehicle is best for usage in say, uh, village because in village, village you drive electric vehicle and this. With this, I conclude my speech. Say hi to electric vehicle and buy to petrol vehicle. And you, ev the cost of the it is high. To buying the every people is not that much easy because the cost of the vehicle is high. Thank you. The world listen only to the winners and not to the losers. Can also be said like, the world listen only to the 1% and not to the rest of the 99%. Do you know who is the 1% and what about the 99%? Hi ladies and gentlemen, I am Dinesh Ram, here to give a speech on the topic, be the 1%. Out of the 100% of people's population, there are only 1% of people who end up in success and rest of the 99% of people who end up in failure. So, 
what is success and why do people run after it we live in a period where we have to achieve something and accomplish some goals in our life we are forced to do some things for our parents teachers family and also for ourselves the definition of success differs from person to person for example the person sitting next to you will have a goal that is completely different from yours and success does not have any definite definition it can be simply stated as the satisfied feeling one gets after accomplishing the goals of his life as we all know that students studying in a school will always admire to get good grades in the academics and be the best in his schooling and they work hard for their dreams to come true and success isn't easy if easy everybody could have achieved it success is quite harder it demands hard work smart work commitment time management sacrifice triumph over triumph over failure and the dare to take risk and you should not be afraid of failures because failure is the key to success and remember the lost money could be regained but not the lost time so you should use your time wisely on a wise person on a wise thing i think you all might know about elon musk he is the world's richest person and people do say that he is the richest person because he has the money with him but that's not the actual truth he is the richest because the time he spent 20 years back on learning about some new things and inventing some new things the time he spent 20 years back helped him to develop a such big development and lead him in this way and he is the owner of spacex he owns a car company called tesla and he is also worth buying twitter and coming to spacex spacex is a company like nasa but it aims for the humans to settle in mars by the year of 2050 and tesla is a company which produces electric cars uh, and it's motive to prevent the use prevent the usage of petroleum cars and petroleum cars are one which harm our mother earth and this uh, electric cars helps to prevent the usage of non renewable resources petroleum because it takes millions and billions of years to regain and let me tell you something the amount of sacrifice that a person has done in his life is directly re- related to the amount of success he has done in his life yes you have to sacrifice something that is deepest to your heart to get something bigger uh, but i don't say that you should sacrifice something like eating foods or spending time with your family or playing with your friends because that is necessary for your proper functioning of your brain but instead you can start sacrificing things like watching tv or playing video games or wasting your time on uh, wasting your time by seeing you unusual videos on youtube whatsapp facebook twitter and etc and uh, instead you can utilize this time on uh, various things like doing your hobbies or inventing some new things or learning about some new things or even reading books or also studying for your exams and as i said time is the most valuable asset than anything as elon musk he is the one used the time very wisely on a wise thing to which made him as a billionaire in the world and you should not be afraid of failures you should have a triumph over it and some personalities like jeff bezos elon musk andrew tate tristan tate sundar pichai ratan tata mukesh ambani are some personalities who follow this triumph over failure and uh, this uh, mukesh ambani took a risk of releasing jio 4g network imagine a world without 4g network we would be still lagging in some other networks and remember during the covid 19 lockdowns were held everywhere during the lockdowns the online classes helped the children to cope up with their education and without the 4g network the online classes would not reach the such development as per now and some people think that success is the full stop of their life success can solve all their problems but that statement is completely wrong success can solve your problems only your majority of your problems but your minority problems can so only solved by you and your feelings remember the majority of problems can only be solved by success but the other problems should be solved by you and some people take success too seriously and they work for it they goes into the stage of depression sadness anxiety you should enjoy your life you should work for it and you should just enjoy for it with your family with your friends or with your favorite person or someone 
and uh, the one person people always wake up early waking up early is a good habit which our ancestors told us there is a saying in english that says the early birds gets the worm this says that the birds which are early to the hunt gets the worm this also fit for the people's life the people who are early from their bed gets the opportunities to improve their life and that opportunities helps to lead their life and they budget everything they they don't spend much they spend less but they budget that and they don't ignore bills ignoring bills is common in our area for example the electric bills electric bills are something we get regularly after a month at the month end or the starting of the month uh this electric bills are being often kept kept aside by the by our people but this may cost you some penalty or even cut down of your electricity and this is a wastage of time the one percent people always pay off the bills and most importantly they don't they don't leave the debts debts are something which is uh, which is stuck in with you and you should start paying your debts with uh, with with the highest percentage like credit card bills are most uh, highest interest you, you should start paying your debts with the most highest interest and uh, i would like to conclude my topic by saying that success comes to you when you invest something for it thank you hi everyone i am harshavardhan i think everyone here want to do your work without the worry of money like watching netflix all day or simply sleeping in your home and i am going to say how to achieve it by fire i am not saying the fire which you dance around the campfire i am saying the fire financial independence retire early so what is fire fire is a movement started 3 decades ago in the us and where an individual start saving and investing intensively to retire at this early 30s or even 40s for example a man named joe domingos achieved fire at the age of 31 and now i need to work for money ever again it's crazy right can you say that you will retire at the age of 31 and now i need to work for money it's doubtful but i am going to say how to achieve it before that you should know what is your fire number fire number is the amount you needed to earn to retire and is it is calculated by your annual expenses multiplied by 25 this may change sometimes because of your spending it may increase or decrease and there are many types of fire in each type of fire the approach to achieve it differs and i am going to say four main types of fires they are lean fire regular fire fat fire and coarse fire so what is lean fire lean fire is having enough investments which can cover your essential expenses these essential expenses include your housing clothing food etc if a person achieve lean fire is to be laid off from his job he no need to worry about his essential expenses because he have the money to spend on it and he might have some leftover money which he can spend on his entertainment or whatever he want and this is one of the fastest way to achieve fire because the person is achieving fire by living below his means for example if the if a person's monthly expenses is 50k the person who is trying to achieve fire by lean method will live with 40k or even 30k the next type is regular fire regular fire is having enough investments which can cover your expenses associated with your current lifestyle and this is commonly known as financial independence in simple words the person who is trying to achieve fire in regular in, in the regular method is trying to achieve the financial independence so financial independence is nothing but having two options option a option b whether to work or not and the third type is fat fire the name fat even suggests this is a huge type of fire you need to earn such a huge amount so that you can live a happy life and a luxurious life you might have some leftover money which you can pass on to your children or your gan- grandchildren and this is one of the time consuming fire to achieve because you need to earn such a big number and the fourth type is coarse fire coarse fire is where your investment starts to grow by itself without your investments in simple words you starts to in- invest regularly or often in 
and you will reach a state where you no longer need to invest and your old investment starts to grow by itself and you, it is done by the magic of compound interest and you should not disturb it because sometimes this may cause you lose the money and how to achieve fire there are three steps to achieve fire the first step is ha having a good income you should have a good income to achieve fire because without good income you cannot achieve for example if your monthly income is 10k you the 10k might be spent on your regular expenses and you might not have enough money to save or invest so you should find a job which pays you a little more than your monthly expenses for example if your monthly expenses is 50k aim a job which pays you 60 or 70 or more you can save and invest the remaining amount and the second thing is having control on your spending you should have a control on your spending you should not buy anything you want just because your salary is increased you should not increase your spending for example in the first month your salary is 1k 1 lakh and your monthly expenses is 50k you're spending the 50k and saving and investing the another 50k in the second month you're promoted and now your monthly income is 2 lakhs and your monthly expenses is 50k you no need to increase it because you proved that you can live with 50k why need to increase it i'm not saying don't just increase it you can increase it but the, just a little bit like 2 or 3k it is more than enough and the third and most important part investment this investment will tell you whether you will achieve fire or not so you should not dump all your money in one thing like equity equity is the stock market you can you might say the stock market is doing good why need to i no need to dump all my money in it if you check the history of the equity also it is not like that but i will say an example in 2007 nifty our indian stock market collapsed and the all the investments dropped from drop to 59 percentage think if you are invested 100 percentage in nifty at that time how would you feel how stressful you would be and you will be in a constant stress and tension seeing the ups and downs in the market sleeping with stress get up being with stress will you call it a happy life i won't so don't just dump all your money in one thing like equity so you can make an investment plan like dividing your money invest in stock market invest in foreign stock market invest in debt invest in etc and you must have a financial advisor to it you are earning the money not to fill your bank accounts but to spend it so spend it happily retirement is not the end of the road it is the beginning of the new journey thank you hi and good evening to anand all present over here i am akil what do you all think is important for the success of a person hard work practice desire experience yes they all are important but they need something important and special than those and it plays a x factor in the success of a person which might or might not come to the person even in some places it's the different between the winner and the loser any guesses it's luck so luck can be uh, defined in three kind on how they work so let me say what's luck L uh, luck which can be created by the person so imagine yourself passing through a, a mountain cliff full of rocks rolling down so you cannot assure yourself that you will come out alive from that situation so you should be aware what's going around you whether a rock is rolling down and falling on you so if you're aware you can put yourself away from that situation and you can help yourself to come out alive from that situation so in that particular situation you have created your own luck then luck which comes to the person without their knowledge and helps them to succeed in their life i hope you all know the runner called usain bolt he ran the fastest timing of 9 seconds and uh, in a 100 meter race around and what if i said he got lucky in in his timing yes he got the 
tailwind which was blowing in the area where Usain Bolt ran his race was around 0.9 meter per second. To here, it might be less, but actually it makes a huge difference between the first place and the second place in the uh, record. Uh, so, luck did a small role in his success which made him succeed and I hope you all know the game of ice hockey and that about 50 to 40 percentage of uh, people who got succeeded in their life like uh, playing to bigger clubs or even playing to their nation were usually born in the first quarter of the year around the months Jan, Feb, March and April. So like maybe the luck had played in their role like uh, the month which they born had have affected in their victory might be and even it's one of the underrated role uh, luck played in the uh, success of a person so in their luck comes to the person with uh, without their knowledge and helps them to succeed in their life next uh, luck which comes to the person according to their psychology so like imagine yourself having a good day if you're having a good day so obviously you will think positive well you're thinking positive you will actually spread positive vibrations around you so that like uh, even you will spread uh, positive vibrations to people around you so that like uh, you might strengthen your friendship with uh, your uh, friends and even you can get some good friends then wh what if it was a bad day so obviously like you will think negative so you might spread negative vibrations so which might cause in like uh, your, uh, your relationship between your friends might cut down and even you might uh, be hated by m other others then how was the word luck got originated uh, according to a journalist called mental flaws the word luck was originated from the middle dutch region and it was abstracted from the word called look which is the shortened form of the word giluk which means happiness or good fortune and the word luck was first brought to the English language as a gambling term and even it was first brought to the English language around 15th century. Then uh, how could we be lucky? This would be the most questions asked by most members uh, because like uh, they might lose uh, because of their uh, because their operator got lucky. Actually you have nothing to uh, do with getting lucky Ac because like uh, Luck is a combination of chances and circumstances. When they both combine, luck is formed. And the both chances and circumstances are mostly out of our control. So, like, then what can we do to get lucky? At least to increase our percentage of, of getting lucky. So let me give you uh, some examples. First, you just uh, be prepared for anything and stay positive then you just like uh, spread uh, spread positivity around you and you just uh, surround yourself with positive people then practice gratitude so by doing those you can uh, increase your chances of being lucky then is luck the only important thing in the success of a person eventually not let me explain you with a example so there was a research done by a member and he added uh, 100 members and uh, those 100 members were given a particular number of hard work and a particular number of luck. So and uh, while they take, uh, while they took the members who have succeeded in their life, the, uh, they was having an equal number of hard work and an equal number of luck which helped them to succeed in their life. So with this we can understand that success is a combination of hard work and luck. Then uh, there are many religions in our uh, world, right? So I will show you some of religions which has a v good view on the luck. Like Christianity, Hinduism, Jainism, Taoism and uh, even Buddhism has a different view on luck. So. I like to remember you all that lucky people usually try new stuff so that they get lucky but unlucky people usually I mean like they try 
stuffs but actually before trying they will just walk walk on through every angles which uh, might they might get lost uh, so i like to conclude by saying uh, by thanking one and all sitting down here and hearing to my speech thank you hello everyone i am sidat have you ever considered how life's less desirable moment of embarrassment makes us stronger yes embarrassing moments are making us stronger embarrassing moment doesn't necessarily mean to leave someone in hurt or demolition often it hap at it happen accidentally we naturally life rise from adversity and end up thriving even more in spite of the day or moments once we wish to erase embarrassment is what is called as self conscious emotion that is something we experience in relation to others when we make mistake or behave in a way that's against social standards or norms says david who is harvard medical school psychologist and author of the book emotional agility the anticipation of being embarrassed helps us to better prepare for challenging situations in future if you are on a high stake presentation on behalf of your team to a potential client you will both likely think to the content and potential reactions says david but potential embarrassment leads us to prepare more and we want to not to let our team down embarrassing moments is what we all experience in our life it could be tripping in front of a stage forgetting your lines during a speech or getting trolled for your appearance but at this moment people feel humiliating and they will think this too out today and they get stressed and they wish they just they can disappear from this moment first of all, first of all embarrassing moments are sign that you're stepping out of your comfort zone and taking risks putting yourself in that situation and trying out something new even if it doesn't work out always that's something we should all proud of we are not just giving up we are trying out something new and pushing ourselves to learn and grow yeah i'll say example this one of my classmates is stopper at all except english so many of them make fun out of him by saying he's just mugging up and del- delivering by this he started preparing more and he was just trying and trying and trying and he nested nested them his performance improved after four to five exams he proved others by getting first rank in english even famous personalities and successful people in this world, in this world experience embarrassing moment example the goat of football lionel messi also at the beginning of his career he was trolled for his appearance he was very short so many many members uh, make fun out of him bullying him so he feel embarrassed but he never Uh, give, gave up he was on the way to his success and now we reached the height where we all, we all can't imagine accepting a embarrassing moments makes us resilient and stronger pushing ourselves to learn and pushing ourselves to face our fear and moment of discomfort discomfort leads us to increase in our confidence and we get a ability to we get a we get a ability to handle hard situation and it's important to know the difference between healthy risk taking and reckless behavior and we should know the potential of the risk and benefit before taking it out when we are embarrassed we feel humiliation this moment of humili- humiliation makes us more stronger and this teaches a valuable life lesson it prepares us for future cha- future challenges this embarrassing moment act as a wake up call for us and remind us our so and it helps us to feel empath it makes us feel empathetic towards others who feel this similar situation in their lives even embarrassing moments uh, deepen build our, it helps us to build a relationship stronger when we share a embarrassing moment to others it creates a sense of intimacy and vulnerability which which helps us to feel connected and it creates a sense of community now i'll say them tips to overcome embarrassing moment first confront rather than avoiding when you are embarrassed fight or flight response kick in if you can admit admit it or correct it yourself if it's a feasible situation helps us it helps us to move on but avoiding the situation only makes it more fearful and increase in chance of embarrassment next uh, addressing the 
embarrassing situation in crucial conference and it's okay to say i'm embarrassed i messed up and can i get another chance number 2 keep you cool and calm in every situation it can be hard to keep it together when you're embarrassed but the anxiety can be overwhelming but keeping you cool and calm in that situation helps you to improve the circumference for example apologize when you made a mistake or change the conversation in different challenges direction helps you to stay calm and uh, and applying self snorting technique also helps you to stay calm for example take a break in that situation and practicing grounding exercises also helps you to overcome this situation next practice deep practicing deep breathing practicing deep breathing has a numerous benefit for our mental health when we are emba- if you yourself find your you are in a embarrassing moment practice deep breath it helps you to reduce your anxiety and stress it makes you cooler and even this helps you to slow down the symptoms of physical symptoms of shame guilt and f- shame and fear yes use he use by using humor also you can overcome embarrassing moment next time when you are embarrassed try to change the thing in a funny way and you can come out of the situation then everyone here face embarrassing moment but it's in your hand how you are taking it some will let them to some some will let embarrassing moments to dominate them but some will take this opportunity to success and succeed in your life take this embarrassing moment to uh, as a opportunity to to your life and succeed in your life thank you new beginning starts from the every new beginning starts from the other beginnings in don't be afraid of what goes wrong and be excited of what goes right take your first step with faith don't see the staircase see the first step which you take and keep everyone is a genius if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree then it will spend its entire life thinking that it's stupid Hello everyone I am D Shiva Balakrishnan and I am here to give a speak on the topic which should be spoke a long back ago Many times we see parents or guardians or teachers pushing the child to score well in their exams and they are often analyze the worth of the child by the marks which they have scored in their exams The and my topic here is do exam results alone determine a child's worth Many times the adults fail to recognize the talents of a child apart from what they can score in their exams this puts intangible pressure onto their heads and uh, score good marks in their exam to prove their wealth the discrimination that the students have been facing on the academic performance is an age old practice that we still continue which is pretty normalized by now many times we see even teachers scolding and giving punishment for the poor performance in their academics if we still tend to attach the worth of a child into a single piece of paper then here is the prevalent question what is the root cause for this conventional mindset still amongst us even in the 21st century one of the root causes undoubtedly are the unique features of our education system especially the one followed by the indian society our society al- always tends to and conditions the society on how to regurgitate the lessons on assess the child on how well they have regurgitated the lessons which they have studied in schools and colleges into a sheet of sheet of paper rather than thinking how well they understood the concept and how well they apply the concept in their real life scenarios this illogical mindset led the students to study for the sake of good grades good marks and escape from the mental torture and never study for their good future also the way a society fails to acknowledge the plethora of passion talent and dreams kids have apart from their academic performance put this intangible pressure onto their heads and never bother to enjoy learning never bother to enjoy learning in this situation many of the students think that the only way to be successful is education and they think there is no any other way to be successful in life we should abolish the thought from the students mind and this and this uh, many of the potential and talents of a students left unused 
uh, in this situations, the students who are scoring low marks in their academics facing the issues like mental stress, clinical stress, and suicidal thoughts. In 2019 alone, we have lost more than 10,000 precious lives, and this has happened at the, at the days of exam results out. The Indian uh, survey organization says that, organization says that Four out of ten students are there in the clinical, clinical stress. As the adults, they have to realize the difference between school smart and street smart. Now, here will be a big question to you. What is school smart and what is street smart? I will explain. The school smart are the students who are scoring good marks in their exams and perform well in their academics. And the street smart are the students who are having the capability to overcome their real life incident, real life difficulties. In some cases, the students may be school smart, the students may be street smart, but in rare cases, they be both. It's very important thing to, important thing. We should not bring down the worth of the child by judging the marks which they have scored in their exams. Earlier, institutions made their admission according to the marks which they have scored in their entrance exam, but now they are slowly changing. They are analyzing the students step by step, and assessing them and uh, knowing their talents and giving the admission according to the respective colleges. This helps the students to set a good future. Develop the problems of annexity at very young age that we give, that we give unwanted importance to the exams. Instead, we should ensure that the single exam does not change the life of a student. The students who are good at education may not be good at other activities, but the students who are good at other activities like agriculture and the non-education based activities can be not good at education. And it's a commonly accepted fact that education is not the basic measure for the success in the future ventures. Now, as a society, we should ask question to ourselves. What as a society we can do this from do the to, to stop from happening this? First, we have applied the direct uh, content which is given in the book. So we have to aim in develop, developing, developing the critical thinking of a student. So the content which is given in the book may not change, but the real life situations may change. So it would be difficult to overcome the problems if they read only the textbook contents. So if we develop the critical thinking of the students, it would be easier in their life to overcome the problems. So again, I'm saying develop the critical thinking of your child. Second one is, instead of saying them to mug up, you can say them to understand the concept, and this would help them to score good marks. And third is, prepare them for the monstrous world waiting at the doorstep, rather than don't prepare them for the standardized test. Standardized test. And third is, make them to believe that there are many ways to be successful in life. Fourth one is, teach them how to be passionate, co-passionate, determined, driven, and confident in their each step which they take in their life. There are lots of doctors and engineers. Make, there are less humans. Make them to be one of the finest in them. Uh, but it's by this, I conclude that the education might look like the life-changing point, but really it's not. I would like to say one more thing. The, the child who is scoring good marks in their exam will go for a good job. But the child who understands the concept can give work for the a good scorers. Thank you. Hello all, this is Nishan Krishna from grade 9b. Culture, what do you all think about culture? Culture is something that we all follow, but we don't know what is the reason behind the cultures and what are the moral values behind the cultures that we all follow. I am Nishan Krishna, here to, give, here to tell you the values of the cultures that we all follow. First one, let me start with Namaskar. This is a way of greeting people which is, used, which is followed in India. And in this, in this culture, the 10 fingers are joined together. When the 10 fingers are joined together, there will be a pressure created in your eyes, eyes, ears, and mind. When a pressure is created, this pressure increases your remembrance power. And the next one is throwing coins into river. So this, this, culture, is, uh, this culture was followed in olden days in many countries. This was because consuming copper was very much vital for the, uh, for the human body. 
so in olden days coins were made of copper so our ancestors threw copper into river and consumed the river water so this is why co coins were uh, threw into river kitta irukum illaya and the next one is sitting in the floor while eating when you sit cross leg cross leg in the floor while eating it is like an indication for your digestive system to get activated so this is why we sit in floor while eating the next one st uh, starting with spice and ending with uh, sweet in food culture spicy food is an uh, spicy food is like an indication and it boosts up our digestive system and digestive assets and sweet uh, sweet food ends the digestion process so this is why our ancestors tell us to start with spicy food and end with and end with sweet and the next one is uh, visiting temple regularly visiting uh, our parents and grandparents uh, tell us to visit temple regularly but some of us don't like that they tell us uh, to visit temple regularly because temples have an positive energy in the in the temple where the god is placed the place is filled with positive ions called protons and there won't be any windows or things uh, kept there uh, placed there for the pro uh, for the positive ions going out when you go to temples to worship god you will be getting the positive energy and that is why uh, our parents and grandparents insist us to go to temple regularly the next one ringing of bell in temples do you all know why bell is rung in temples ringing of bell is like uh, is an uh, the sound of bell is an pleasant sound and it gives us it doesn't distracts us and uh, makes us to concentrate in worshiping the god and the next thing is the sound of the bell lasts for 7 seconds and in the 7 seconds the seven healing centers in your body gets activated the next one is worshiping people tree like our ancestors found that peepal tree is the only tree which uh, produces oxygen in the day uh, day and night both the time so our ancestors started worshiping peepal tree uh, from that and the next one tying uh, mango leaves in front of uh, the entrance of our houses mango leaves is like a natural purifier for our homes and when if we tie the man, uh, mango leaves in front in the entrance of our houses the air which comes inside our house gets purified and comes in so this is why we tie mango leaves in the entrance of our houses and the next one is applying turmeric in the uh, turmeric in face and using turmeric as an uh, using turmeric turmeric is one of the best antiseptic which was given uh, which is given by our na nature and when we apply turmeric in our face and wash it it is like uh, it it, uh, it cleans our face and it is mostly used for the uh, for cleaning the uh, it is mostly used for uh, like a medicine in the wounds too because it has the ability to kill the uh, kill the germs too next one is mehndi mehndi has the medicinal value to cool down the temperature of the of our body so this is why mehndi is used in most of the functions and brides too in brides in marriages too use mehndi so it also has the ability to avert stress and the next one is uh, henna henna is also similar to mehndi which also has the ability to cool down the temperature of the body and it is like very much uh, it has some uh, it has more medicinal values so our uh, our ancestors used henna um, instead of mehndi in olden days henna was used and the next one is uh, the next one is term um haldi haldi is also like uh, same thing like turmeric which is all, uh, which has the ability to cool down our body and avert uh, stress this is was also uh, this is also used like um, this is also used like turmeric india is one of the country which has uh, diverse 
diverse culture which follows more cultures and traveling to different places may tra traveling to different places you by traveling to different places you can learn different cultures so our cultures that we follow have lots and lots of reasons so please do know please do know the values of our cultures and please do follow the cultures thank you life is full of chaos the reason for chaos are many but most of the time it is money hi all i am okesh kumaran from management stream here to talk about financial management on one of the topic escaping the rat race escaping the rat race is essential to live our life with fulfillment happiness and purpose if you are the breadwinner of the family you can easily relate to what i say imagine you are being paid monthly yet you don't have enough money to cover all your expenses 3 by 4 of the salary is paid to rent and mortgage and with the rest you have to manage for your expenses like utilities groceries medicines sometimes the unavoidable situations like marriages parties funerals will throw you more expense for your budget and you are not sure about the job loss this list is bombing me out and it probably bombs you out too the exhausting routine of trading your time for money for your entire working life is called as rat race many billionaires go for work but for them it's just a choice rather being a necessity in my locality there's a max teacher who works around 12 hours a day yet he doesn't have any satisfaction in his job or quality family time after hearing this from him i had some curiosity to know how to escape this rat race escaping the rat race is a step by step journey first you should give yourself a why why you have to escape this rat race what is the most irritating thing in being in a rat race you should take this anger and frustration as an motivation to work harder and escape this rat race then the next step is stop buying things you can't actually live without things and keep on burying yourself with debts by buying lavish things so be wise before you spend your money for example if your neighbor buys an audi car and you are like i have to compete with him and have an edge over him you will end up getting a loan and you will risk yourself to the pro probability of getting inside a debt trap so be cautious before spending your income or salary then the next step is pay yourself first when you receive a salary or income you should pay yourself first that money you can use it for your personal uses like recre recreational activities or for your grooming even you can use it for acquiring skills then you, you spend the rest of your expenses if you fall sh short of this budget you can take this as an incentive to work harder and how multiple streams of income in the next step is acquiring assets from the savings you should acquire assets in such a way that those assets will earn you more income in the future for example you are buying a house If the when you buy the house the rent which you are paying to the landlord will be reduced or if you you are buying an online store from the exchange which has already proven to generate higher profits enhance your income and you will have added advantage when you buy when you resell these assets you can sell it for higher profits and earn income then the next step is learn sales and marketing one of the most valuable business skills to escape this rat race are sales and marketing if you are able to align your skill or talent with sales and marketing you will be uh, you will be able to earn income more passionately for example there's an artist who paints so beautifully but he is unable to sell those paintings if he is able to sell those paintings he will be able to elevate his wealth then the next step is picking up a side hustle you can't always rely on your mainstream income so it is better to have an side hustle even students like me can have side hustles like drop shipping drop servicing or you can be a part time freelancer and do stuff like free, uh, graphic designing video editing and photo editing and even you can tutor your younger younger ones this will add additional security for your financial situation 
then the next step is investing your money from our childhood we are said to save our money but when we save our money by using those traditional methods like saving it in a piggy bank or keeping it in a locker or de or depositing in the bank these things will the purchase capacity of this money will be affected due to inflation for example if you save 1 lakh this year the inflation rate in india is around 6% so when you use it by the next year it will be reduced to 94000 so it is better to invest your money before investing your money you should have some basic knowledge about platforms like fixed deposits in stock market cryptocurrencies and bitcoins for example if you invest in fixed deposits you will have lock in period so you will not be able to withdraw your money when in an emergency situation but if you are investing in stocks you will get 14 to 15 percentage returns in long term and you will be able to withdraw the money in long in an emergency situation so it is better to invest your money then the next step is outsource everything be an entrepreneur but not self employed there's a huge difference between a self employed person and an entrepreneur a self employed person replaces his 9 to 5 job with 9 uh, by being an 9 to 9 self employment gig but an entrepreneur hires smarter people and have control to coordinate and ma manage them to run his business successfully an entrepreneur can run his business even without his presence for several days so it is better to be an entrepreneur however in the process of acquiring assets you should get help from other people finally there there is there will be a day in your life where you will walk out of your workplace for the last time and think to yourself of freedom escaping the rat race is about having control over your choices which align with your value and goals escaping the rat race is not easy but it is necessary if you have to live your life with happiness fulfillment and purpose do you want to work for 40 hours a week for 30 to 40 years by accumulating wealth having multiple streams of income surrounding yourself with like minded people you'll be able to break the cycle of work and consumption thank you greetings to all your final letter says you have only few days to live what will you do you will think several things right yes that's a famous saying that live every day like you don't have tomorrow does this quote give you any meaning to you hi all i am harshan i would like to share a short story there was a lady who went and met her guru she was just 26 she had cancer and bone marrow the doctor saw said she has only 3 more months to live the, she went and met the guru and said that you always say that life is so beautiful but convince somebody like me who is having only 3 more months to live the girl was in a ferocious voice and she was crying the guru immediately said that how lucky you are you have only 3 more months to live you can plan your life accordingly look at my situation i am thinking that i live up to 96 years i am having more long term plans but in your situation you are having a big advantage that you are going to live only for 3 months you can plan accordingly to it whatever in the didn't experience till now you can experience in this time the lady said it is very easy for you to say the guru said immediately immediately that the tragedy of life is not only death the tragedy of life is what dies within you when you are still alive will die sooner or later is the question but the tra the real the true tragedy is not the number of time you could have smiled today you killed it today the number of time you would be happy today you killed it today the number of time you had make others loud you killed it today the number of times you had be appreciated others you killed it today we are killing our things on a daily basis according uh, accordingly we are not uh, experiencing too much there are so much so much music so much to dance so much to see so much to taste 
so much to read and so much to express and so much to experience in this world. We all are killing in a daily basis. We should not do that. The Guru says that he teaches uh, some management program for the entrepreneurs. Just listen. On my right hand side, there is seven crores. And on my left hand side, I have one more seven crores. Suddenly, unfortunately, the right hand side seven crores has started burning. Any one of you from here will throw the good money to bad money to put off the fire? No. No one will do that. No one will throw good money on bad money. You will think that at least this is gone. Let me save this. In accounting language, it is known as sunken cost. They say that at least this is gone. You can't get it back. But they say that this is there for you. You can live with this. From this, what the Guru is trying to say is, why are you thinking about death, which we cannot control? Why are you thinking about death, whereas we have to think about life? We have to invest life on life, not on death. Even the Guru said, the tragedy of life is not the ultimate death. The tragedy of life is when you are still alive. The Guru even said that, death is God's domain. Let him manage that. Life is man's domain. Let us manage this. Birth was not in my choice. Death also will be not in my choice. How I live between these both terminals is in my choice. I want to do complete justice to my choice. I want to do justice today. The Guru said, go and do whatever you want. Go to cancer hospital and make somebody happy. If you are postgraduate, go and teach some children who are under, in under poverty level and make them happy. The Guru said, do whatever you want until the end. When God wants to call you back, let him call you back. Of course, the story gets beautiful from here. The lady started to go to the rural place and some cancer, cancer hospitals to teach and make someone happy. Every week once, the lady started to post a postcard to the Guru that, Brother, still I am alive. The name sign. This used to be for every week. Every week. At the sixth month, whereas she should be died in three months, she lived up to sixth month. Sixth month, there was a letter to the Guru that, I am going to fight a war. Which is, which is killing me every day. And even she said that, I have started researches in, in cancers. Then she lived up to next to seven years, whereas she should be died in three months. She was thinking every day, every day that, I'm not going to die today. I'm not think, I'm, I won't let anything to die within me. This is used to she live for every day. Even she got PhD. The guru was, the father guru, it was not important that she got PhD. She lived up to seven years that thinking about, not thinking about death. From, uh, from this, the Guru says that why are we throwing every day of life on death, which we cannot control? We have to throw, uh, why are we thinking about death? Whereas, we have to think about life, we have to invest life on life, not on death. Then, the, the Guru said, hereafter I will teach that you should not live that you should not live every day that is this is the last day of our life you should live this live every day live every day recognize that this is the last day of live every day recognize that this is the first day of your future the guru says that don't think about death think what you should do next uh, life is understood from backwards but it must be lived forward the future is the future depends on what you do today, not tomorrow. Yesterday is gone. Tomorrow is yet to come. We have today. Let's begin. Life fails to be perfect, but life never fails to be beautiful. Thank you. Parents are the ultimate role model for children. Every word, every action have an effort. No other person or outside force has a great influence on the child than the parent. Gris to all. I am Ritish, here to give a speech upon how to make parent happy. Taking care of yourself whenever is possible. If you rely on your parents to wake you up at 7 a.m. in the morning, set an alarm for 6.50 a.m. Beat the alarm to the punch. When it's time for your snack, make it yourself instead of asking one of your parents to make it for you. Taking care of yourself will demonstrate that you are care about yourself and you 
your fearless restriction if your parent ask you need anything say it's okay i can get it this will show your parents that you are not only willing to get something on your own but you are willing to take care of yourself if a parent ask if a parent ask you to make a snack flip the offer around on them say why don't i make something to eat instead if they decline the offer they'll be impressed there is nothing wrong to see up, uh, to your parents on everything i to i and they won't agree to accept everything be a responsible person during the disagreement and if you are not going to win state yourself that uh, your parents will respect you for maintaining a right tone ecologically when you are getting upset it's okay to say sorry i need a second to climb down and uh, i need a moment to be cool off St- study well and work hard in class do uh, do homework on time don't forget to turn it in there is there is work hard in your class and and do well in your class uh, this will show your parents that you are respecting them and you you, you can handle more responsibilities uh, consider making a deal with your teacher that you are uh, fond of making a po- post to ho- phone call to your home you did an major assessment well if even if your teacher informs that it was your idea this will show your parents that you are you are thinking about a big picture save your money to show your parents that you are not an illustrative and to buy a something or if you have an a part time job or uh, if you are doing a course save your money and give it to your parents or keep in a piggy bank this will show your parents that you are doing an activity effort to save the save the money save your money to buy something badly and that you are willing to save your money ways to make your parents happy be responsible person uh, be their friend understand the generation gap and uh, be success in your future and etc i'll say a small story about a boy his parents are uneducated and they are middle class they are uh, keeping their child in convents and cbse school but the child was not studying well but the parents are working from morning to night to keep their children in a good way but the child was not uh, ready to study and their parents are uh, willing their parents are thinking that he should not be in uh, my stage he want to be in a uh, good stage and then their parents will be proud in uh, front of their relatives or outside their friends tell the truth when you are doing an uh, argument with your parents don't say lie and if you are lying your parents know that you are lying it's uh, it's okay to say sorry and understand your parents feelings and make it uh, make it happen and be understand the uh, understand their emotional feelings and help them in their daily life when you have an holiday or anything study for a half an hour and do work in home there is nothing wrong to do work in home and uh, be their friend uh, and share everything with your parents uh, and be the, understand uh, and etc understand the uh, understand your parents hard work and do well in your school there is nothing wrong to uh, think about your friends and teachers do uh, do the work hard in your class take and delegate notes and be successful in your class uh, if you are not getting a first rank you are getting a pass mark and you can be successful in your class and your parents will be happy
love you parents we are also busy to grow old we are also busy to grow uh, up we often forgot that our parents are also busy to grow old and understand your parents and be kind to them don't say the lie when your parents are speaking something to you if if you say the truth they will understand the uh, your uh, words and i conclude that love your parents uh, they are growing old and thank you a small pause to thinking on the morning make the day happier hi i am aitish to talk on the topic positive thinking changes our life our thoughts and beliefs have a great impact on our emotion action and ultimately the outcomes we experience in our life by adopting a positive mindset we can achieve our goals by overcoming our challenges so let us dive into the ways in which positive thinking changes our life research has found that positive thinking have numerous benefit for our physical and mental health by studies has found that positive positive emotion can boost our immune system and reduce our stress people who practice positive thinking are very lucky to have a healthy relationship experience greater happiness and have a greater job satisfaction one of the key component of positive thinking is cultivating a growth mindset this means believing in our ability that can be developed by our hard work and dedication by adopting a growth mindset we will be more willing to take on new challenges there are many ways in which positive thinking can change our life now i will say you some ways in which positive thinking can change our life the first way improved mental health positive thinking can improve our mental health by de- decreasing our stress and depression by focusing on our positive thoughts and emotion the second way better physical health positive thinking can improve our physical health by boosting our immune system and lower our blood pressure and reduce the risk of chronic disease such as heart disease and diabetes the third way improve relationship positive thinking can improve our relationship with others by focusing on our good things also we can improve our connection between others and feelings of mutual support the fourth way increase success positive thinking can increase our success by increasing our confidence and motivation which can be lead to a greater success in our personal and professional life one of the main reason positive thinking is so powerful is that it can help us to overcome our up overcome our obstacle and achieve our goals focusing on what we want rather than what we fear is more lucky to have a positive action and move towards our goal the benefit of positive thinking are numerous even even studies can reduce our Uh, stress and increase our life span and let me tell you a small story in which positive thinking how positive thinking changes our life there was a small boy named gautam he was watching mobile on that time one of his friend came to his house and recommended a book named how positive thinking can change our life he was so bored to read the book and he kept the book aside in the table and went to go to the school in school he got an happy news that he was having 15 days of vacation for summer he was so happy in one side that there was an 15 days of vacation but in other side he was so sad that what we are going to improve in this vacation and how we are going to improve our knowledge in this vacation and he suddenly he got an idea that we can read the book which we which our friend recommended and he started reading the book and the days passed on after a few days he completed reading the book and he was realizing himself how i was after how i was before reading this book and how i was after 
before reading this book he was so sad and depressed but after reading this book he was so happy and he had overcome his depression from this we can understand how positive thinking can improve our can change our life by happier things okay let me t- let me tell you another story which confidence can change our life i will give you a clue to find a person he is a great scientist he makes the world darker to lighter to brighter and he made the night as a day yes he is the founder of bulb he is thomas alva edison he had failed more than 1000 time to find a bulb but he do not give up he do not give up his confidence and he had he had achieved his work after failing more than 1000 times from this we can understand thomas alva edison said that i had not failed 1000 times i had found the ways for not inventing a bulb for 1000 times from this we can learn from this we can learn how positive thinking how confidence change our life i let me tell you another story there was an angry man named john paul he was an owner of a company he w- he would be scolding everyone who supported him and encouraging him one day he decided to go on outing and he got into the car and moved towards the gate on that time he saw the watchman not doing his work and reading a book he got angry and he went near the watchman and angrily shouted that you not doing your work properly by and reading this book first do your work properly and do this work for that the watchman politely replied replied that sir i have been reading this book past 5 days i have i have experienced my, my changes in my life and from this we can learn how positive thinking changes a life positive thinking have numerous ways in which we can uh, change a life meaningful way, in meaningful ways i conclude my topic by saying i invite that let us include positivity and let us live a best life today thank you